It's week eight of the Iowa high school football season. Burlington getting ready to take on the Atumbo Bulldogs in week four of district action. The Greyhounds are now one and six overall and 0-3 in district play looking for their first win ever in school history. Last night for the seniors to be on Bracewell's new field, so we need to bring home a win. Senior night 2015 at Tumble in Burlington, right around the corner on YouTube and KBUR and KBUR.com. Special recognition to these individuals for the tremendous amount of dedication and loyalty they have displayed through their career for the entertainment they have provided us. Our first football senior player is Camilo Cardenas. Camilo Cardenas is the son of Isabel and Jim Crackle. He has participated in soccer and football. After graduation, he plans to attend college. Please recognize the middle line of his parents. <laughs> Brian Tessimata is the son of Karen Sawyer. He has participated in football and track. After graduation, he plans to attend college. Please recognize Brian and his mother. Christopher Cordero is the son of Capri and Pablo Cordero. He has participated in football, basketball, and baseball. After graduation, Christian plans to attend college and continue playing baseball. Please recognize Christian and his parents. Adam George is the son of Daniel George and Laura Burke. He participated in football and track. After graduation, Adam would like to go to college and play football and major in sports medicine. We can give a hand for Adam and his parents. <laughs> Todd Gordon is the son of Robin Gordon. He has participated in football and track. After graduation, Todd's current plans are to attend FCC for two years and then transfer to the University of Iowa. We recognize Todd and his grandmother and godmother. Jackson Gravel, son of Brian and Dane Gravel. Jackson has participated in football, basketball, baseball, and soccer. He is also a member of the Club, Clubs, Team Suspect, National Honor Society, Secular Humanist Club, Leo Club, and is an ex board member of the Senior Class Cabinet and Marketing Club. Please recognize Jackson and his parents. David Gray is the son of Mark Gray and Sally Moss. David has participated in football, soccer, and swimming. After graduation, David plans to attend college and major in exercise physiology. Please recognize David and his parents. Kimara Lewis is the son of Jerry Reed and Huma Reed. Hugh has participated in football and soccer and is a member of the Minority Scholars. After graduation, he plans to attend college and major in physical therapy. Please recognize Kumaran and his parents. Malik McClellan is the son of Misha McClellan. He has participated in football, wrestling, and track along with being a member of Minority Scholars. After graduation, Malik is unsure as to where he'll be going, but plans to major in either law enforcement or physical therapy. Please recognize Malik and his mother and Randy Detweiler. Adam Moeller is the son of Leslie Friedel and Jeff Moeller. Adam has participated in football and swimming and plans to bowl this year along with being a member of choir all four years. Adam plans to attend SEC for two years and sees himself declaring a major that deals with animals or music. Please recognize Adam and his parents. Tyler Mazina is the son of J.P. Mazina and Michelle Dunn. Tyler has participated in baseball and basketball. After graduation, Tyler plans to join the National Guard. Please recognize Tyler and his parents. Colin Moser is the son of Kevin Moser and Carla Webb. Colin has participated in football and soccer. After graduation, Colin plans to attend SEC for two years. 
Please recognize Colin and his father. Termeo Pellis is the son of Termeo Pellis and Niala Pellis Freeman, and son of Tara Pellis. Termeo is participated in basketball and football. After graduation, college and major in agricultural business. Please recognize Termeo and his parents and grandma. Austin Timberlake is the son of Chris and Darren Timberlake. Austin has participated in football, baseball, track, and baseball, basketball. Austin plans to attend college after graduation with a major still to be determined. Please recognize Austin and his parents. Josh Wallerich is the son of Christy Alfred and Chris Wallerich. Josh has participated in football, basketball, and soccer. After graduation, Josh plans to attend SEC before determining his major. Please recognize Josh and his parents. Luis Barkentine is the son of Maria and Jacob Barkentine. Luis has participated in football during his time here at BHS. After his time here, he will return to school in Germany. Please recognize Luis and Coach Shea. Michael War is the son of Lisa Cunningham. Michael has participated in tennis and football. After graduation, he plans to attend college and wants to major in physical education. Please recognize Michael and his mother. Brady Wazinger is the son of Chad and Tanya Wazinger. Brady, Brady has participated in baseball, football, and trap shooting at BHS. Currently, Brady is undecided between colleges will be attending college to major in agriculture. Please recognize Brady and his parents. And now for our senior managers. Carly Warren is the son of Stephanie Warren. Carly has been a manager for the football team. After graduation, Carly plans to attend SEC and major in nursing. Please recognize Carly and her mother. Lindsay Sly is the daughter of Jennifer Sly and Jason Sly. Lindsay has participated in basketball, soccer, and cheerleading, along with being a football manager and a mentor in Club M. After graduation, Lindsay plans to attend the University of Iowa and major in education. Please recognize Lindsay and her parents. We have one more round of applause for our senior football players and managers. We would next like to recognize our senior band students. Our first band senior is Sophie Brewer. It's the daughter of Don and Erica Brewer. Sophia has participated in concert bands, symphonic band, volleyball, student council, and varsity club. She plans on attending Iowa State University to major in animal science and agriculture, and eventually work as a large animal veterinarian. Please recognize Sophia Brewer and her parents. Christian Cordero is the son of Pablo and Caprice Cordero. He has participated in concert bands, symphonic band, pep band, and jazz band. Christian has also participated in baseball, football, and basketball. After high school, he plans to continue playing baseball at a yet to be determined college. Please recognize Christian and his parents. Oceana Cosby is the daughter of Robert Cosby. She has participated in band, orchestra, and swimming, Leo Club, National Honor Society, Renaissance, and Varsity Club. Her plans after high school include attending SBC to attend nursing or another health career. Please recognize Oceana and her father. Carly Darnell is the daughter of Jeff and Katie Darnell. She has participated in marching band, concert band, and symphonic band. She is also a member of the Unity 4-H group Target, 
Predator Shooting Club. Carly loves to work with animals and, be, and will be attending Kirkwood next year studying to become a veterinarian technician. Please recognize Carly and her parents. Rhiannon De La Rosa is the daughter of Christopher and Jennifer De La Rosa. She has participated in marching band, oh, okay. pep band, concert band, and symphonic band. Okay. She is also a member of National Art Society, WPA, ELO, and Creative Writing Club. Rihanna plans on attending the University of Arkansas to major in horticulture. Please recognize yeah, Rihanna and her parents. Coleman Ertzinger is the son of Joe and Deb Ertzinger. Coleman has participated in marching band, concert band, symphonic band, jazz band, jazz ensemble, WIU honor band, and was the drum captain. Coleman will attend the University of Iowa next year and hopes to eventually earn his doctorate in music education and become a college professor. Please recognize Coleman, Kurt Singer, and his parents. Jared Gibson is the son of Rodney and Kimberly Gibbons. He has participated in jazz band, jazz ensemble, concert band, symphonic band, and cross country. After graduation, Jared plans to attend SEC and then transfer to a four-year university to major in criminal justice. Kelsey Heineman is the daughter of Ken and Laura Heineman. Kelsey has participated in concert band, symphonic band, freshman choir, a cappella choir, treble choir, and key club. Kelsey plans on attending Mid-American Nazarene, where she will major in elementary education with a minor in music. Please recognize Kelsey Hyman and her parents. <laughs> Olivia Lehman is the daughter of Ann Brotherson and Mark Lehman. Olivia has participated in symphonic band, concert band, jazz band, jazz ensemble, marching band, and pep band. She is also a member of the Secular Humanist Club, AT Club, and Leo Club. After high school, she plans on attending Iowa State University, but is undecided on a major. Please recognize Olivia and her parents. <laughs> Gavin Moles is the son of Jason Moles. He has participated in marching band, concert band, symphonic band, track, football, and speech, along with the bass. He is also a member of the Iowa National Guard 832 Engineering Battalion. After high school, Gavin plans on attending UNI and majoring in telecommunications. Please recognize Gavin and his escort. Clara Reinen is the daughter of Camille and Peter Reinen. She has participated in jazz ensemble, symphonic band, jazz choir, and a cappella choir. She is a member of the Spectrum Club, Speech and Debate, Gay Straight Alliance, Phoenix Effect Club, Student Council, and National Honor Society. Her plans after high school include spending one more summer working at the Dank Park Pool before heading off to study at an undecided university. Please recognize Claire and her parents. Quentin Walker is the grandson of Betty and Ed Wilde. Quentin has participated in jazz band, jazz ensemble, concert band, and symphonic band. After high school, Quentin plans on traveling or attending college. Please recognize Quentin and his escorts, Jody Rangel and Betty Wilde. Ricky Wolf is the daughter of Aaron Smith and Randy Schaefer. Ricky has participated in marching band, concert band, symphonic band, cross country, basketball, track, and softball. She plans on enlisting with the Marines after graduation. Please recognize Ricky and her parents. We would also like to recognize Mercedes Stevens, who is not available to appear this evening. One more hand for our band seniors. our senior fall cheerleader. Our first senior cheerleader is Tara Abbott. 
Tara is the daughter of James and Teresa Abbott. She has participated in football and competition cheerleading and track. Tara is a member of Chamber Orchestra, Phoenix Club, Senior Class Cabinet, Student Council, National Honor Society, and AP Club. After graduation, she plans on attending the University of Iowa and major in marketing or nursing. Please recognize Tara and her parents. Kelsey Bairdsley is the daughter. She has participated in dance, team, football cheerleading, and wrestling cheerleading. She is a member of senior class cabinet, green catchers. After graduation, she plans on attending cosmetology school and then will continue to get a degree in business. Please recognize Kelsey and her parents. Ashley Crandall is the daughter of Darren and Michelle Crandall. She has participated in football cheer for four years, wrestling cheer for one year, competition cheer for two years, and dance team for four years. She's a member of Student Council, National Honor Society, Varsity Club, and Senior Class Cabinet. After graduation, she plans to attend Iowa State University and major in business management. Please recognize Ashley and her parents. <laughs> Kayla Elmore is the daughter of Sandy and Tom Elmore. She has participated in dance team, softball, football, and wrestling cheerleading, and track. She is a member of Leo Club, Varsity Club, AP Club, Senior Class Cabinet, Student Council, and National Honor Society. After graduation, she plans to attend Iowa State University and major in animal science. Please recognize Kayla and her parents. Alexa Jager is the daughter of Don and Lori Jager. She has participated in competition in football cheerleading and dance teams. She's a member of student council, varsity club, senior class cabinet, and dream catchers. After graduation, she plans to attend college and major in nursing. Please recognize Alexa and her parents. Tamara Knox is the daughter of Talia Knox. She has participated in cheerleading and is a member of varsity club. After graduation, she plans to attend SCC to attain her associate's degree. Please recognize Tamara and her mother. <laughs> Riley Messenger is the daughter of Tom Messenger and Beth Fleming. She has participated in cheerleading and swimming. Riley is a member of National Honor Society, Student Council, Leo Club, Varsity Club, and Senior Class Cabinet. After graduation, she plans to attend a four-year college and major in biology and then continue on to med school and specialize in neonatal care. Please recognize Riley and her parents. One more hand for our cheerleaders. Not in tennis this evening is teammates Cody Benson, Jacob Roy, and Josh Roy. Next, we would like to honor our Lady Crunch Crunchy Team. Not able to attend this evening is Emily Martindale. So leading us off will be Madison Osborne. She's the daughter of Craig and Kelly Osborne. She's participated in cross country, softball, bowling, cheerleading, tennis, is a member of National Honor Society Extended Learning Program, and after graduation plans to attend the University of Iowa and major in mechanical engineering. Please recognize Madison and her parents. Next we have Ricky Wolf, is the daughter of Aaron Smith and Randy Schaefer. Please recognize Ricky and her parents. Next we have Robert Camp, son of Karen and Bob Kemp. Robert has participated in cross country. Please recognize Robert and his aunt. Last but not least, we would like to honor the seniors of our 2015 Boys Golf Mac Championship and State Qualifying Team. 
Our first senior is Jake Mueller. Jake Mueller is the son of Kevin and Diane Mueller. Jake has participated in golf, basketball, and baseball, along with being a member of varsity golf. During Jason's senior golf career this past season, he was an individual MAC champion, a district champion, and received first team all state honors by the Iowa High School and Golf Coaches Association. After graduation, Jason plans to attend college and continue his golf career. Please recognize Jason and his parents. LaShawn Wilson is the son of Krista Edmonds. LaShawn has participated in cross country golf, tennis, and basketball. After graduation, LaShawn plans to attend Kirkwood and major in police science. Please recognize LaShawn and his mother. John Werner is also to be recognized this evening, but was not able to attend. Isaac Ord and Jared Holden were also unable to attend this evening, but would like to be recognized.
Home team tonight, Burlington is wearing the dark or purple jerseys and some of the visitors wearing the light one. What are you guys is gonna call a heads or a tails for me? Who's gonna do it? What are you gonna call? Heads is a call. If I drop this, we'll flip again. If I drop, we go again. Let's come up heads. The Tumwa has won the toss. You, you can defer, you wanna defer, you want the ball. You're gonna receive. Which goal would you like to defend? You wanna kick this way. Okay, you, you guys put your backs over there, Tumwa? Gentlemen, you're captains for a reason. Shake hands. Let's have a great ball game. Thanks, guys. Tomar won the toss and they did. Yeah.
by Sergeant at Arms, Officer Smith, and includes Officer Tim Merriman, Officer Grant Hillier, and Officer Jesse Hill from your local police department. Let's do a round of applause for all that these men do for our city. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of our national anthem. We want a sponsor for next year's Colors of the Game, which, by the way, tonight we present you Wisconsin against Kansas no, State. No, check. I'm, I'm sorry, Nebraska. Nebraska, because Atumwa in their road white uniforms, cardinal red numbers, uh, or may, not cardinal, fire engine red numbers, fire red engine pants with two white stripes down either pant leg. The reason we went Nebraska instead of Wisconsin, it's a white helmet with a red shell, but down the center, only one singular red stripe. You betcha. Not as typical for Wisconsin, the red-white, red combo, and also and the, block the singular o. letter, the block O. The that's block right. O. So it uh, should be an exciting night as we get ready to kick off. Uh, setting up on T4, Tumma right now is number 62, Kane Brumbaugh, the junior kicker and offensive lineman, and we are off and running. And a nice kick, going to go over the head of Tyler Messina into the end zone. Atumma moving from left to right. They won the toss, chose to defer, so Burlington will start this one with the football on their own 20 after the kickoff bounds out the back of the end zone. Of course, Burlington decked out in their home purples, gray pants with stripes down either side. Go ahead, John. I was going to tell you, you know, we were talking about uh, the absence of Austin Timberlake with Tyler Connor filling in. Uh, just got the news that number 72, Kumar and Lewis, fills in the spot for David Gray, who's on the sideline and street clothes tonight. So some new names tonight throughout. We'll get to those as they come up. Tyler Connor, your quarterback, direct snap to Cameron Crabtree on the first play from scrimmage, and Crabtree, as he's done throughout the season, makes initial contact with the front four at the line of scrimmage, then pushes the pile forward for a gain of five up to the 25. Yeah, Mace, really a nice push there by the offensive line. Uh, Tyler booking Nobish for a tumble on the tackle there. Uh, nice second and five that we got to deal with. So nice gain on first down. If you can do that all night, you're going to give yourself some short down and distance situations. Second and five from the 25. Snap to Crabtree again. He'll sweep it around the left side. Turns the corner, gets upfield, 30, 35, and right out of bounds just short of the 40 at about the 37. You know, Scott, it got set up as a uh, inside play on first down, and now during second down they just dipped outside. 
Connor did a nice job setting up his blockers to get first down yardage. So first down and 10 for the Greyhounds. Two carries, 17 yards from the get-go for Cameron Crabtree. Oh, it's bad. You know, one of the things, Scott, I think they're going to try to just accentuate running the same play over and over again. Crabtree again, this time off the right side, right up the left hash, if that makes sense. The right side of the line, left hash mark where the ball was spotted. He gains another six up to the 43. Now again, another nice push by the offensive line. Dennis Kurtz, the junior wide receiver and linebacker for the Bulldogs, there for the stop. Again, another nice manual second and five for the Greyhounds. Call it four, second and four from the 43. Greyhounds have to get across the 47 for their second first down. Crabtree again, this time right side, gets a nice block oh. as he turns the corner, a seal by Tyler Connor, midfield into a Temple territory and run out of bounds at the 37. If it's not broke, don't fix it. They're going to stay with this play, either off tackle or sweep until a tumble makes the adjustment. Number 28, Colton Schroop, the senior wide receiver outside linebacker for the Bulldogs with the knock out of bounds. And that's when you really see Zach Shea's vision of 12 offensive players come into focus. Your quarterback, in quotes, Tyler Connor, your lead blocker to, sp uh, to spring Crabtree around the corner. First down and 10 from the Bulldogs, 38. Crabtree once again. He's carried it every time on this drive. Play number five. This time he's brought down after a gain of two at the 36. And like I said, it's either off tackle sweep, off tackle sweep, off tackle sweep. Uh, Sam Moreland, the linebacker who is their leading tackler with the stop for, for Tuma, uh, going to probably come out here wide side on the sweep. So second down, and we'll call it a long eight. Again, Crabtree this time bringing it to the left side. The wide side of the field's got some room inside the 35-30. Drug down at about the 27. And I believe, yeah, he's going to have it by a yard. Another Greyhound first down. I tell you, what, what Cameron does really well and what helps Tyler is that he sets up the block. He's aiming inside. The offender comes inside. Tyler can set up the log on the outside. And, and Cameron gets around on the outside. Uh, Gabe Bowling on the tackle for the... Bulldogs, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> the old oop de loop. Number eight. I, I, I'm going to call it a loop de loop because, again, the entirety of the offensive line on the left side decides to do a jump ship and go to the right side, and again we draw somebody off. It, it, it looks like the old time videos that you see, where the whole entire offense decides to shift before the snap of the ball. And it, obviously, for 100 plus years, it's worked. So why change it, right? <laughs> yes, because offenses do not. They do not evolve. A, they do not. A hundred plus. A hundred plus. Five. So first and five from the 21. Again, Crabtree off tackle nice. right side. Oh, go, 15, go. 10. Bears his shoulder. He's got yardage inside the 10. That's a pickup of about 12. But another Burlington first down. Sophomore Mason Hartman with a beautiful kickout block. The little outside linebacker came up, tried to box that in. Cameron once again sets up outside, sticks his foot in the ground, and allows Mason to go ahead and take him out. So it'll be first and goal from the Bulldog nine-yard line. Cameron Crabtree has carried it every time on this drive. He'll carry it again right up the middle. This time he stood up and brought down a gain of maybe one, depending on the spot. You look at the far side official, he's basically where he was when he started. So we'll call it no gain. It'll be second and goal. Yeah, nice tackle by Joe Hartley. Able to get in there and, and, and sniff out that the play's coming inside. I'd move out just a little bit wider with your wide receiver and go ahead and run that sweep. Cameron's gotten seven, eight yards each time he's carried the ball on the outside, and we are in that area for, for the Greyhounds right now. Second down and goal just inside the nine. Crabtree or Grin, they're going to counter with Messina coming left side. Get Cuts it, it upfield. Get going. Inside the five. Yeah. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Greyhounds. There goes the gun, the first one of the night. We'd love to hear that. Thank you, Tom Buckman. Love yep. to hear that. We haven't heard that Beautiful in a while. play by the Greyhounds. Tight inside counter. They're really overplaying for the counter sweep, Scott, and then that allows Tyler to move inside and score for the Greyhounds. So great to get on the board first. Great first drive. Takes a lot of time. <laughs> it's, it's what you want to have for the Greyhounds, especially as we open up senior night. And especially on the opening drive. The drive took three minutes and 28 seconds. Colin Mosier to try the extra point. 
Everything is good. The snap, the spot, and the kick. So with 8.32 remaining first quarter, the Greyhounds strike first blood. It's Burlington 7, a tumble nothing on KBUR and KBUR.com. We are your neighbors, your coworkers. We are the future. And we believe in our community. And that, by shopping local, buying local, and banking local, we can create a healthier community. Making friends, building relationships. Join us. Case Buying Community Credit Union. Keeping it local. It's where you belong. Case Buying Community Credit Union. Conveniently located at 2115 Des Moines Avenue and 485 West Burlington Avenue. Federally insured through the NCUA and an equal opportunity housing lender. You drive a car, you own a home, and you need insurance on both. So why not see if you can save some money in the process? I'm Crystal of Carlos Captavila Agency. When you insure both your home and your auto with American Family Insurance, you may qualify for a substantial money-saving discount. Interested? Call me at 752-1479. American Family Insurance Mutual and Standard of Ohio and Wisconsin Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin, 53783. Carlos Captavila Agency supports local athletes. I can barely hear Back here at Merrill Lane Miller Senior Family Field on the campus of Burlington High School, Braceville Stadium. Kind of at Burlington High School, actually downtown Burlington. But hey, who's who's really keeping track of Google Google Maps, right? I say we're on the campus of Burlington right. High School because we'll, we're in the city. We'll take it. We're near a we're near Apollo, which used to be the campus of Burlington High School, which so, used to be called Burlington High School. Colin Moser has it on the tee, ready to kick it away to Isaiah Hutchinson, and Hutchinson will take it from his own 11. Across the 15, 20, cuts it outside, 25, 30, picks up a couple of blocks, going to be ridden out of bounds just across the 35, near the 36, maybe the 37. Looks like Tykel Gordon was the first one there to run him out of bounds. Guys kind of gave away their lane integrity there, Scott. you got to maintain your outside arm free so that when you're running down the field, that guy breaks the outside, you have a chance to adjust and make the tackle. We can't let that happen. Hopefully we get a few more chances at that through the well, night. We just got a break. Burlington did. 10-yard walk off, illegal block in the back from the 23. So that's going to erase about 22 yards of that return. 23, actually, now as I look at it. So instead yeah. of the 36, the Bulldogs start first and 10 from their own 13-yard line. Kind of a pistol formation set. And the quarterback barking out signals. That's Sam Moreland. You got to love the fact he's number 34, Scott. Number 34, Walter Payton from the Wildcat. He'll keep it oh. after a play action fake. He's going to sweep it around oh. the right side. He's got running room across the 20, 25, 30. Tripped up by Spencer Sherwood at the 34. You know what? It, it's just an unfortunate situation. You recognize Ron Drake Hornfanner's playing that corner mace. And he comes inside out to try to make the tackle. That gives Moreland the lane. You can't do that as a corner. You got to come outside in and let your pursuit come fill the hole. That belly action will get you quite a bit. Yep. He put it in the belly of his running back, Isaiah Cox. Well, pulled it out and read it right. And that and that's the way it should be when when Isaiah Cox is 45% of your scoring. Now here's another keeper by Moreland. Fake the pitch to Cox this time around the left side. Just kind of squares up, buries his shoulders into a Greyhound and gains four to the 38. Sherwood, Jaeger, and McClellan, names we've called pretty much every week on the tackle. Nice job coming in and filling in. So it'll be second down and six from the Atumwa 38-yard line. Moreland again behind center, hands it to Cox. This time Cox will take it off the left side. Barrels over one Greyhound before he's brought down short of the 50, but there's a flag on the play. Most seen on the tackle, but Scott, I don't think they're going to accept a penalty since that usually means that somebody on the defense is offside. Well, the white hat is talking it over with the near side linesman. He's pointing toward Atumwa, and it's going to be an illegal formation wow. on the Bulldogs. Oh, kind of should have told him that's Jerry Winter, our head referee for tonight. So take that call anytime. Give us a chance to be be in a situation where we haven't usually been in, and that's in front of the chains on defense. We'll take away the gain of 12. That'll take it all the way back to the 33. So second down and 11 for the Bulldogs. Moreland with the snap. Takes it away from Cox. Keeps it himself around the right side. Dives forward across the 40 to the 43. 
A gain of about 10, and it's going to be third and short upcoming for the Bulldogs. About one yard to go. Spencer Sherwood just kind of sticking his hand in there at the, the end. Kind of overran the play, but that was better defense by Drake. Outside in, let make Moreland cut back in and let the defense defensive pursuit catch up. Third down and one. Receivers left and right. Sam Moreland barks out some signals. Now checks with the coaches on the sideline. Approaches, tells his lineman what to do. Threw his hands oh, over his head, ball on the ground, Cameron. ball still on the go ground. Go Isaiah Cox thought he had a chance at it, and instead, Johnny on the spot, Camilo Cardenas. Nice dive. That's something that these Greyhounds do every day. They call it VIA, best in America, and they're always finding a way to find pursuit. Whenever a football's on the ground, it is a loose ball, and it doesn't matter if it's a drill, scrimmage, Anywhere, if there's a ball down that's loose during some sort of action, you are to get on top of it. So nice job, Greyhounds. Great position again. Hey, do you think Cameron's going to get the ball? I, I don't know. I'll, it'll be interesting I to think, see. I think he's going to get the ball at least Here they go times. with the loop-de-loop -loop formation. They put everybody on the left side except for a guard and tackle right of the center. Hands on the ground, however. They'll go with the formation. Crabtree up the middle. He's going to gain about three inside the 25 to the 24. But, John... On that fumble recovery, that was just want to. Oh, yeah. Two separate Atemba Bulldogs and Sam Moreland and Isaiah Cox had a chance to come down sure. with the football. Someone for the grounds, I didn't catch who it was, knocked it away from Moreland, and then really Cardenas just took it away from Cox. It was, it was Cameron, Cabtree. Again, it's one of those things that Coach Shea is trying to enforce and, and, and emphasize. Second down and six from the 24. Crabtree again off the left side, just pulls his way, oh, still on his feet. Shook at least one tackler down to the 19. It's going to be close to a fourth down. He's going to be short by about a half yard. Offensive line's doing a nice job of sealing everybody down inside. Not there for Dennis Kurtz on the tackle. I think he may have gotten more yards and maybe even into the house. So third down, and I'm going to call it a short one from the 19-yard line. It. Who's out at the wide left right now? <laughs> That'd be... Uh, That'd be Mr. Cordero, and he got somebody to jump again. Every, well, I won't say every time, but Casey O'Rourke picked up on this back in week four when you were watching this girl to my left play volleyball. He said every time Mr. Cordero, Christian Cordero's in the formation, split wide right or left, they run the little loop-de-loop -loop with the offensive line. They've done it once tonight now, and it seems to be a pattern. How can you not pick that up on film? Easy five yards. I'm not sure that if how. 80, if 80 split out, they're going to do that. Uh-oh, uh-oh. What do we got? The Play light? stop going to be an illegal procedure, I would guess. Yeah. Well, you know what? Believe it or not, Cameron Crabtree was going to carry the football again. again. We, we, talk, yeah, we talk about this a lot. You, you watch film, you watch film, you say, okay, if 80's out here, there comes the flip. But again, once guys move, you're trained. You know, a lot of times when you do drill, a lot of times when you do drill, they go set hut, set hut, set hut, and you don't, and I know they're going cadence right there. But aren't going you supposed to watch the ball? You are, but we've talked oh. about this. When you see movement, Matt Moreland got caught for that by, by the way, for a Tuma. First and 15 from the 19, Crabtree, then a counter to Messina. Messina comes back left side, gained one before he's tripped up at the 18. Sam Moreland, the quarterback inside linebacker on the tackle there for the Bulldogs. That's Interesting usually combination. what you want to see <laughs> in, in football. And that's why high school football is so cool, because you can have a quarterback... Oh, by the way, I play defensive tackle, defensive end, linebacker. There's where you want him in with most of the pounding. <laughs> so second down and 14 from the 18 for the Greyhounds, trying to make it 14 to nothing. Connor rolls right. First pass of the night. He's got Messina in the flat. Oh, Tyler no. Messina spun down, lost the football, but the ground caused the fumble. It'll be a pickup down to just short of the 10 of about eight yards. Yeah, nice pass, nice concept. You've been running sweep, running sweep, running sweep, running off tackle. All of a sudden you break, and now Tyler has the ball instead of Cameron, and you're able to throw that pass in the flat. Not for Jawan uh, Bridges. That thing's into the end zone for another six for the Greyhounds. Well, it's now third down and manageable. About six to go for a first down. The Greyhounds have to get it inside the four for a first down. Connor pitches it way behind Crabtree, and all Cameron can do is fall back on it. Back at the 20, that was just a bad play all the way around. You know what? It's one of those things that where you think you got things going for you, you try something different. You line up in that situation where you think, okay, they're going to think we're rolling out on that pass formation. Now we get a quick pitch maybe that comes. Probably didn't practice that a whole bunch this week. You know, you're, you're sitting at one and, one and six. You got to make something happen. One to try the field goal now is Colin Mosier. 
Baluli spotted at the 27, called a 37-yard attempt. Crabtree with the snap. Snap is good. Gravel with the hold. Kick is up. It's long enough to get the left upright and bounce over the crossbar. How'd he do that? God, I thought that thing bounced forward. And I, so did I. I okay. thought it did, but they put their arms up. I'll take what they say over what you thought you saw. That's right. Yeah. Three minutes, 10 seconds remaining. A 37-yard field goal by Colin Moser. Makes it Burlington 10, a tumble nothing. Back in one minute on KBUR and KBUR.com. Barn Grover Glass does kitchens. Yes, they do. Whether you want to upgrade your countertops or do your entire kitchen, commercial or residential, Barn Grover's cabinet expert is Bonnie Samuels. Just give her a call. She'll sit down with you at your home or business, build a computerized design, give you a free quote, and work with you till the job is done. Remodeling your bathroom? Barn Grover's does that, too. Barn Grover Glass serves Burlington, Iowa City, and the surrounding areas. You live for it. Touchdown, Iowa. Nobody laid a glove on him other than his teammates who are modeling him right now in the end zone. You love it. Son, a quarterback keeper, down he goes. That's a sack. It's what you do every weekend. Every pass, run, tackle, and touchdown is right here. Iowa travels to Northwestern this Saturday morning at 9. Brought to you by Mersman Furniture, Bob Dodds Insurance in Danville, Case Fine Community Credit Union, and by Standard of Beaverdale on News Radio 1490 KBUR. Back here at Bracewell Stadium, Burlington with their biggest lead of the season at 10 to nothing, with just over three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Back underway. Loose ball. ball. Muffed at the 26 and fallen upon at the tw- at the 31, rather, by Ross Finley. No, 21, not 26. Nick Batterson. Nick Batterson. Yeah, I tell you, you know, that really has been a nice kickoff series for them all year. Uh, I think Collins did a nice job of kicking the ball and putting it into a certain place. So I think we're in a situation where we put a little more pressure. We might be able to put them in a, in a, in a place where they may not like. So Batterson actually fell on it at the 32. So first down and 10, trailing 10 to nothing. A tumble with the football. And Isaiah Cox right up the middle across the 35 to the 36. Nothing fancy, but again, a four. James Anderson, Spencer Sherwood, and uh, who we got. And we have uh, Cameron again, Crabtree. He's... He's, he's on his way to making another uh, MVP game for himself. He's run the ball really well uh, and has played some solid defense and a very good snap there for the field goal. So second down and four, or rather six from the 36. Now a mix-up on the handoff, and Moreland just has to keep it. He turned one way, Cox went the other, and all Moreland could do was try and get back to the line of scrimmage. <laughs> he lost two back at the 34. Until he said hello to Brock Garlow. Nice job by Tremel Tellis with the pressure before we go. So third down and eight from the 34. Two minutes remaining here in quarter number one. Greyhounds on top, 10 to nothing. A little bit of confusion by the Bulldogs. Not sure how they want to line up in their formation. Two wideouts on either side, four total. Moreland back to pass, looking right. Now he's going to tuck it and... Officially, that could be called a sack, I suppose. If it is, it is it's the first of the year for the Greyhounds, but I think he got back to the line of scrimmage. So. I, I'm, I'm going to call the sack. Good job, Tramiel and Tykel Gordon on the tackle there. Not a design draw, Scott. It was one of those things he saw. Uh, I thought he wanted to coverage. throw it. I thought yeah, he, he did. It, it wasn't yeah. a design draw. He, he didn't see what he wanted to see, so he wanted to get some yards. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's a, you know, a pretty solid guy at uh, what is he, six foot one, 210 pounds? So in the kick it away is Kane Brumbaugh. Nice punt. Going to be taken by Sherwood at the 28. Across the 30. Stiff Get arm one. to the 35. Spin, nice move. spin move. Across the 35 to about the 38. And that's where the Greyhounds will start this drive. Leading 10 to nothing with a buck 10 remaining in the first quarter. Brought down by Austin Brown, a sophomore for the Atomo Bulldogs. Uh, Scott, you know, this is... I think this is probably the farthest we've ever started to drive this tonight, so it'd be really a nice situation for us to again to take another 8-10 to 10 play drive. Not true. Started at the 20, then All had right. the fumble back right. here in, in right. Adumla territory. Game moves so I, quickly. I hate to correct you. No, you don't. You love Your it. short-term memory is pathetic. Getting older. First and 10 from the 38, Tykel Gordon for the first time uh, tonight. Going to be brought oh, down, fumble the football. 
probably still going out, still out on the ground. And it's going to be fallen upon by a tum was Dennis Kurtz. And I think, now, now help me out, John. That was a high tackle. It looked like at least a hand was on the helmet face mask area. However, he didn't grab it. No, no. And then there's nothing wrong there. And, and the thing is, he was chasing him down from behind. And as, as he slid down, Tykel got his feet caught up underneath him. And that's when he kind of extended his hands and the ball came out. You know, as, as good of a block as Mason Hartman threw for the touchdown, that was not one of Mason's best efforts. And I think Ty Kell might have been shaken up on the plays. On the, his right leg did jam into the turf pretty hard. Back to pass on first down and trying Beautiful to go cover. deep is Moreland intended on the far side for Moreland. <laughs> so Sam to Matt, incomplete. And on the coverage was, is that Vorwerk? Yeah. Back in back the lineup in, this back week. In, and I talked to him. I saw him in the hallway today and I asked him how he's feeling. He goes, I'm ready to go. Well, Zach so. Shea's a big fat liar. He said that Josh wasn't going to play this week. Well, I tell you what, <laughs> not only did he. That was off the air. Not only is he playing, but he did a nice job, nice position. Wouldn't even give Matt a chance to get the ball if it were thrown perfectly. Shea's still a big fat liar. And I'll tell him to his face. Here's Sam Moreland with the keeper. Going to follow Cox into the hole. And he's got three to the 31. McClellan. Never heard his name before. No, McClellan. Hey, there's Sherwood again, and, and Zeiss Sean Baker with some early reps on the tackle. Those guys making their first real plays of the year here in week eight. Okay. <laughs> we Something, never... Something's going on right now. Officials talked twice to Zeiss Sean. Uh, I'm not sure what, what's going on. But they kind of kind of look like they're trying to tell him to sell down a bit. Third down and eight. From the 31 for a tumble, trailing 10 to nothing in the final 20 seconds of the first quarter. Here's Cox off the right side, still on his feet. Almost broke the tackle of Tyler Messina. Had he done that, he'd be in the end zone as it stands. He's down to the 16. And is there a flag on the play? I don't see one, Scott, but I don't it see really one does. Either. Oh, yeah, there is on the 30. Ah. Legal procedure. Illegal formation on a tumble. We'll take it back five yards. So instead of the 14-yard gain, it'll be a five-yard walk-off, and instead of first and 10 from the 16, it'll be third and 13 now from the 36. Tell you what, that's not what you want to see, though. Isaiah Cox getting kind of warmed up uh, in the series of, of this offense, because if you get him going in a place where he feels good and gets into a rhythm, that could spell problems for the Greyhound defense all night. So we need to make sure that we get these kind of penalties and we stop him on the line of scrimmage, get him running side to side. Looks like they're going to let the quarter run, Scott. They do. We've put 12 in the books. We've got 36 to go. Hopefully you've enjoyed it so far. We've seen it before. The ground start quickly. Don't go anywhere. Let's see what they do over the final 36 of this game. We put one in the books. We've got three to go. The Greyhounds with a great first quarter. It's Burlington 10, a tumble nothing. Back in one minute on KBR and KBR.com. Here's a message from the folks at Standard of Beaverdale that the big box stores are not going to like hearing. It's happening more and more often that Standard of Beaverdale will get customers that have been to the big box stores and have not found what they're looking for. As a matter of fact, one customer recently told Standard that they left the big box stores so they could come to a real lumber yard. See, the misconception is that just because it's a big box store, they must have whatever you want. But that's not always true. Specific items, tools, matching pieces, and replacement parts may not be available even if you bought them from the big box store and if they do carry it you may have to buy 50 pieces when you only need three standard of beaverdale is so in tune to what you need for home improvement and construction projects it's like esp they can practically anticipate it so at the risk of ticking off the big box stores even more why don't you just come to standard of beaverdale to start with chances are you'll be overwhelmed by the selection and customer service standard of beaverdale just north of exit 258 out the beaverdale road Back here at Bracewell Stadium. 10 and up in your score after one quarter of play. Burlington on top. And on third down and 12, Sam Moreland rolls right. Wanted his brother Mitch at the 25. Would have been short of the first down, but he threw it short. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down and long. You know, this could be the highlight of my night, Scott. Go ahead. It's Matt Moreland. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mitch. There you go, Matt There's Moreland. A, who's <laughs> Mitch Moreland? Mitch Moreland is an outfielder for Texas. 
So he wouldn't be playing here tonight? No. Okay. In fact, he just got eliminated a couple of nights ago in Toronto. Right. Anyway, I'm nice just glad I didn't out. say Keith because yeah. I don't want to talk about former Cubs. That's right. So Matt runs a nice curl. Uh, look at this, Scott. They're going to go for it here. They're in four-down territory. Fourth down and 13 from the 36. Two wideouts right, one to the left. Sam Moreland back to pass, looking left. Now he's going to roll left, throw left, deep down the left side. Overshot his receiver. It was either intended for Brad Bram Schreiber, or I didn't catch who the other one was. I just saw Bram Schreiber. Say that five times fast. I'm not going to. So anyway, another rollout. Great coverage by Josh Borwick. Has Jay to throw it. Jalen Strunk was there you also go. down there. Good call there, Scott. I was watching the coverage by Josh. So on downs, the grounds take over at their own 36, leading 10 to nothing, just underway second quarter. Be, be, uh oh. Scott, who's wide up? Well, wide that would be Christian left. Cordero wide to the left side. And, and they jumped there we go. again. <laughs> Love it. Number 63, <laughs> Carlos Tejada. Again. The junior. I got a uh, 68, actually. 68? Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. that would be Joe Hartley. Karma stinks, doesn't it, Joe? No, doesn't bother yeah. me at all. Yeah. Not one bit. I mean, you, I'm you, okay. you have to have seen that on tape. Well, I know that, we, I know that since we have the fun of being able to call that out. He split wide to the left again. Ah, this time they get it. You can't do it two in a row. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Here's Crabtree off the right side. And he's going to be spun down into Tumwood territory at the 49, a pickup of 10. Yeah, I tell you what, Juwan, Juwan Bridges does a nice job, and Henry Altfilish on the tackle for the Bulldogs. But, you know, just, just doing that puts you in a situation where you got to play on your heels a little bit. You can't play off on the balls of your feet and get going. So first down. There it is. There it is. You had it again. They didn't jump far enough, though. They got back. Crabtree again off the right side. Another gain of six. It's going to be a staple tonight. Henry Altfilish, and again, Jawan Bridges on the tackle for the Bulldogs. Uh, I, you know, obviously they're sensing that they can get these guys jumping. And now if they have something in their count that they practiced on early in the week about going on a quick count, that really puts you in a great position as well. Well, Keep your defense on the heels. Had an advertising idea along the lines of Talladega Nights. That if uh -oh. you, you are contractually required as a Tumwa takes a timeout, we'll keep it right here. Contractually required each and every game to at least once call out the Staples brand staple of the night. Ooh. Tonight, the staple of the night is Cameron Crabtree left, Cameron Crabtree right. Cameron Crabtree off tackle right, and Cameron Crabtree off tackle left. We're, we're moving into a twofer if Christian Cordero <laughs> winds up wide any other time here and we get a little switch. The actual name of that is called a stick, by the way. They call that a stick. What? The play. Oh, the, the, yeah, the where switch. you try and draw yeah. them off? The stick. The stick? Yeah. Such a simple name for such a complex and confusing play for a defense. Football players are simple, Scott. You have to be able to talk slowly and succinctly to them. Can't call the curl route anymore. It's now the chair. Just no, go it is a curl. Down. It's a curl route. Just it's go and the sit wheel down. route. The wheel route. You have to find, and we call that the stop. Now. What what used to be called the butt hook. Uh, what used to be called a long bomb is now called the fade. Back shoulder fade. <laughs> you football coaches, man. Yeah, okay, talk about two seam, four seam. Inside there out. is truly a difference between a two seam and a okay, four seam. There's truly a difference in what we got. Cordero split wide to the left. Are they going to try the okie doke? They are. Nobody jumps, so they're getting. But you're right. They're on their heels now. And they are adjusting, Scott, which makes you play softer. But they're not attacking the ball as Crabtree takes it off the right side. And he's able to work his way forward inside the 30 to the 29, a gain of 15. But you're not moving off the ball as quickly no, as you, you got were earlier. Yeah. And when your safety, Juwan Bridges, or your corner, excuse me, is making that tackle, you know your defense is in trouble because your linemen are getting caught up in the movement. So it's really, really important that we stay with this pressure. First and 10 from the 29. Greyhounds on the move once again. They've been in control all night so far. Ah, just a little bit too early there. Crabtree with a gain of two. Again, Crabtree off trackle right side down to the 27. Joe Hartley uh, for the Bulldogs on the stop. Scott, you know, that's, they're coming off tackle, and I know the play gets designed to cut back over the center. I think Cameron just got to stay just a little bit wider, and I think there's some room out there just a little bit more to his outside. Jesse Bolander split wide to the right. I would gather they won't pass. 
Inside Here's counter. Crabtree, then a counter to Messina going around the left side. Plants his foot, turns it upfield inside the 20 to the 19, maybe the 18. If it's the other side, if it's the official on the Atumwa side, we're looking at the 18. Brought down by Gabe Bowling and Matt uh, Borland on the Moreland, excuse me, on the stop. Or Borland, you know, they're all the same. Moreland, Matt, Mitch, Borland. You know, uh, obviously it? all from the same family. <laughs> First and 10 from the 19. Spencer Sherwood now split wide to the right side. Crabtree going to sweep at that side. Cuts it upfield. Almost had it stripped by Matt Moreland, but he was able to hold on to the football and probably wisely fell down for a gain of just one. At the, at the bottom of that was brother Sam who grabbed a hold of some shoelace there so that it trips up Cameron. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised you see that little play action that they had down at the other side of the field, Scott. I would bet Sam and Matt Moreland have been doing that for several years. I'm sure they've one been. One go low, one count. go high. Yeah. Second down and nine from the 18. Tyler Connor gets the snap. Passes it left side. He's got Jackson there, Grabble inside there. the five. Going to be brought down at the one. Just short of the pylon, but a nice pitch and catch from Tip Connor down to Jackson Gravel and a gain of 17. If Gabe Bowling doesn't wrestle him down, we get another six on the board, Scott. Nice, nice, nice simple out route. Tip does a nice job of just planting that foot and throwing, throwing the ball. Would have been the first passing touchdown of the year as well. Yep. So we would have had our first sack and then our first passing TD. Looks so like as Mr. it is. Sorry, go ahead. Nope, go. First and goal from the one. That's going to be a keeper by Hartman. The short snap to Mason Hartman. Bowls his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Greyhound. The ghost gets the gun. We haven't seen the ghost play in uh, several weeks. Not been able to use it because we're behind so much, Scott. So nice to see Mason who does so much blocking and nice job on defense. Finally get his number called in for six. So with 8.44 remaining in the quarter, in the half, it's now Burlington 16 and nothing. Colin Mosier in to try the extra point. Crabtree snap is good. Gravel's hold is good. Mosier's kick is also good. 8.44 remaining first half. Boy, this is fun. I'll tell you what. Burlington 17. I'm getting excited, John. Haven't called a victory for about five weeks. 17 to nothing. Burlington, not to get ahead of myself, but we'll be back in one minute on KBR and KBR.com. You drive a car, you own a home, and you need insurance on both. So why not see if you can save some money in the process? I'm Crystal of Carlos Captavila Agency. When you insure both your home and your auto with American Family Insurance, you may qualify for a substantial money-saving discount. Interested? Call me at 752-1479. American Family Insurance Mutual and Standard of Ohio and Wisconsin Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin, 53783. Carlos Captavila Agency supports local athletes. We are your neighbors, your co-workers. We are the future. And we believe in our community. And that, by shopping local, buying local, and banking local, we can create a healthier community. Making friends, building relationships, Join us. Case Bind Community Credit Union. Keeping it local. It's where you belong. Case Bind Community Credit Union. Conveniently located at 2115 Des Moines Avenue and 485 West Burlington Avenue. Federally insured through the NCUA and an equal opportunity housing lender. Back here at Merrill Lane Miller Senior Family Field and watching the cheerleaders do push-ups, I just realized they'll be able to bench significantly more tomorrow night. This is the most points the Grams have scored in a game all year, and they're up 17 to nothing late in the first half. Kickoff going to be taken inside the 20 at about the 16, and bringing it across the 35. As I got, you know, I got to talking about that great exercise down there, Isaiah Hutchinson, with a yep. return of about 22. There you go. Yep. They may even be fatigued. They may need some of that Gatorade and banana stuff after they have to push so much. And we're hoping they get a lot more to do here. So it's, it's it really is a nice you feeling to be able to be 17 there. points is the most the Grounds have scored this year, and they've done it in the first, well, uh, was three and a half, plus 15 and a half minutes of tonight's ball game. New look Not for the Bulldogs. Trips to the right side. Sam Moreland behind center. Isaiah oh, Cox oh, behind him. And we got somebody jumping for the Greyhounds. James Anderson, the junior. We've talked about him his first year out in three or four years. Just really anxious to get there. Um, you know, and it's, and it's even harder when you're the nose tackle. The ball's right in front of you. The problem is that's what's going to let a tumble back in this ballgame. This is a key drive. A tumble gets the ball to start the second half. For the Greyhounds, you don't want to let them put points on the board 
and then get the ball right out of the gate in quarter number three. Here's a give to Cox off the left side. Ooh. Bulls his way across, really right across Camilo Cardenas, who was served as a speed bump yeah. before it was uh, cleaned up by Spencer Sherwood, but enough for a first down after a gain of seven. Yep, and again, you don't want to get Isaiah Cox on, Cox on track here because it's going to be one of those situations like we had a few weeks ago at Davenport West. First out of 10 from the 48. Sam Moreland barking out signals. Then he pauses, looks right toward his coaching staff on the far sideline. So first and 10 from the Bulldog 48-yard line. Moreland gives it to Cox off the right side. He's got some running room, turns it upfield. Inside Burlington territory before he's driven back. We're going to give him probably about the 47, so a gain of five. Simple zone stretch play there by the Bulldogs. Uh, initially stopped by Malik McClellan and then just the host of the regular guys within the box. Crabtree, Tellis, Anderson, Garlow, uh, and Cardenas. Called again a four, second and six from the 48. Once again, Moreland will look at the sidelines. As you so often see anymore, the line of scrimmage, settle, and then get the play. Here's a fake to Cox. Moreland's going to keep it around the right side. Dives forward near first down. I think they're going to give it to him at the 41 by about a yard. Yep. <coughs> nice job. James Anderson kind of dove at Moreland's feet. Moreland kind of went over the top. Uh, the mark gives it to him on the first down. Starting to get just a tad bit chippy out there. Stuff on the far side of the play. I'm not sure who all the numbers were, but you can see there's a little bit of jabbering and talking after the play's over. The first out of 10 from the 41. Trips to the left side for Atumwa. Moreland checks out the signals from the sideline. Now barks out the signals. Gives it to Cox off the right side. Plants his foot, turns it upfield. Inside the 30. Shoestring tackle by Cardenas. Saved a touchdown, but it will be another Bulldog first down to the Greyhound 27. Yep, it's the thing we were talking about. you got to find that answer here fairly quickly. Don't let this thing get too out of control. And I have to come clean. I just got called on my jinxing of the Greyhounds when I called victory. I didn't mean to call victory. I just said it's fun to call a lead. That's what I meant to say, although it didn't come out that way. Here's Cox off the right side, so I hereby withdraw the jinx comment. There you Gain go. Gain of five to the 22. Is that and, possible? Can you do yep, that? Yep, and it does because it brings Spencer Sherwood right back into the tackle. Tremel Tellis along with Zy Baker on the assist. So obviously, nice job of calling off that chi or energy or whatever you want to try to call it. I refrain from the jinx. Once again, for the third straight play, trips to the left side for Tomo. That's the wide side of the field, the left side. Sam Moreland barking out signals. Gets the snap. Going to swing it out left side. He's got a man. Gets a block inside the 20. Stutter nice step at the 15. Messina. And Nick Batterson has a gain of about nine. It'll be another tumble first down to the Greyhound 14-yard line. But still a nice job by Tyler Molsina on the bubble screen right there. You know, the one thing I'm noticing, Mace, is that when you look at Moreland throw, you know he wasn't initially the first choice at the quarterback spot. They've had some injuries, and so they've got the biggest, toughest guy to run the ball. But when he throws, it is truly looking like a shot put at times. First and 10 from the ground, 14. Six minutes remaining, halfway through quarter number two. Cox up the right side. Cox straight arms one man, straight arms another man, and falls forward inside the 10 to about the nine-yard line. So a gain of five will bring up second and five. Had a good head of speed before Drake Hohenthaler put the stops to him. Nice concept. Send their tight end, number 41, Brad Bramscheiber, on motion and then just running that outside zone stretch. Two wideouts to the left. Eye formation. Cox dots the eye. Give to Cox. Second man through. He just cuts it off the right side. Untouched in the end zone. Touchdown, Atumwa. I guess my jinx has taken full well, effect as a tumble gonna, right down I'm, the field. I'm going to tell you, uh, Isaiah Cox wanted to send a statement to the Greyhound defense right there. Adam Wegman trying to come in to make the stop before the goal line, and they went. he went looking for Mr. Wegman and put his helmet right between the one and the two and let him know that it's not going to be as easy as you first thought. So Isaiah Cox with the nine-yard touchdown run makes it 17-6, to six, and to try the extra point is Kane Brumball. Snap is good. Spot is good. Kick is long enough by far. In fact, it would have gone on top of Clark Fieldhouse had there not been a net protecting the scoreboard. It's good. 5.24 remaining in the first half. It's now Burlington 17, Atumwa 7. 
Back in one minute on KBUR and KBUR.com. Standard Beaverdale and Beckman TV and Appliance always believe in saving money and being environmentally minded. But sometimes marketing presents things that just don't make sense. Like, for instance, laundry companies that promote saving water when washing clothes. If you're on metered water, it costs just one penny more per load to use a Speed Queen washer than one of the higher-priced, energy-efficient models that seem to have trouble giving you a clean wash. Speed Queen only does laundry, and they're made in the USA right here in the Midwest. They use metal gears in the transmission, they're built to last, and have a warranty to back that up. Standard of Beaverdale and Beckman TV and Appliance are the exclusive dealers for Speed Queen in our area. Come check out the benefits of Speed Queen. User-friendly machines that allow you to add clothes to a low... ...20 to 25 years with normal home use. So get a Speed Queen and do your laundry happily ever after. Speed Queen at Standard of Beaverdale and Beckman TV and Appliance, just north of exit 258 at the Beaverdale Road. Back here at Merrill A. Miller Senior Family Field at Bracewell Stadium. Kane Rumbaugh has it up on the tee and back ready to go. 5.24 remaining in the first half. Browns have seen their lead cut to 10 at 17 to 7. Need to get a good answer here off this Bulldog touchdown, Scott. Brumball with the approach is going to be taken by Messina at the 12. Messina up the left side, cuts it upfield at the left hash. Gets across the 20, a return of about 10 yards, and the grounds will start this drive at about their 21-yard line. Scott, they wanted to set up that wall to the right, but the ball was kicked so far to the left that Tyler decided, I'm just going to try to get as much as I can. And poor Tremel Tellis and Mason Hartman just kind of standing on the 30 going, hey, we're over here. We're going to come get, a, come get us uh, some blockers. The Greyhounds need to respond on this drive. 519 remaining before intermission. Would serve them well to get that lead back up to at least 13, if at all possible. Well, obviously, the way they play, they can do this, Scott. First and 10 from the 22. Crabtree off the right side. He's got running room still on his feet up to the 30, a gain of eight. And he was about one juke from breaking it for much more. Oh, I tell you what, he is, uh, Henry Altfish is very, very lucky man for the Bulldogs. He was able to make that stop. They got a timeout on the field. It looks like Tyler Messina's got a shoulder pad problem. Looks like they're trying to get... Yep, they got to get some laces. The laces popped. Ah. You know, it's one of those situations where the new equipment now has those things riveted and you don't have to use laces much anymore. Uh, but some players still like having laces. It kind of gives them some flexibility. So the crew's on top of that. Kyle Peterson out of Universal Therapy helping out there. Gain of eight, second and two from the 30. Connor flanked by Crabtree. Now a flag on the play. Illegal procedure. Somebody moved. I didn't yep. see it. Brock, Brock Garlo, the uh, offensive lineman who came in. Uh, we just for the checked Greyhound. in from Messina. He was, he was getting ready to, to shift, and he kind of shuffled his feet a little bit. And then uh, the, the Atoma tackle over there, number 62, uh, Kane Brainbrock pointed it out to the officials, and they decided to go ahead and throw that flag, which was awfully nice of them, I thought. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Second down and seven now, back at the 25. Crabtree again off the right side. He's going to be driven back and dropped for a loss back at the 20, a loss of five as he couldn't get turned upfield. And what was a second and two is now a third down and 12. What? What 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 Otum was doing now, their adjustment, is once they say movement, they're, they're on a wholesale slide to the outside. They are not going to let the Greyhounds get outside. Fill in the backside um, off tackle hole with the linebacker. So we got to get it. We got to try to get that play action passing again. The out route that we had to grab was good. Second and twelve, or third and twelve, rather, from the twenty. Connor going to roll left. Throws left, right had a there. man overshot him. That was Borwerk. Had a step or two on his defender. Would have been a first down, but overshot him. It'll be fourth down. Okay with that. That's what we need to do, and we need to do more of it and probably do it earlier in the series so that you get a chance to have a second and third down if things don't work out. As it is right now, the Greyhounds got to punt this thing away. Number 21 for the Bulldogs, Nick Batterson, the sophomore defensive back, is deep around the 40 for the Bulldogs. And to kick it away, Spencer Sherwood. Heels resting on the five, awaiting the snap. Crabtree snap is good. Sherwood steps into it. Knuckleball 
going to be taken by Batterson at the 47. And he, all he could do to catch it and just fall on it. A return of negative one actually hit him in the face mask, but it didn't bound away from him, so a ton more will retain possession. Mace, I'm not sure Nick should be back there. <laughs> this is the second <laughs> attempt to try to feel the ball. Things a little shaky for him back there. Or maybe, because we're Greyhound fans, he should be there all the time. <laughs> Give us that opportunity. Yeah, but then we'd be homers, and we don't want to come off as homers. Trying to be objective on the call. That's right. Trips to the right side this time for Sam Moreland and the Atomo Bulldog offense. New running back in for this drive is Isaiah Hutchinson. Stick with Isaiah instead of Cox, though, Hutchinson. Give to Hutchinson off the left side. Messina had him, couldn't bring him down. Stays on his feet, does Isaiah Hutchinson. Into Greyhound territory to the 46, a gain of about eight. Pushed out of bounds there by Camilo Cardenas. What, what's happening, Scott, is they're putting all that formation to the field, and now you have fewer defenders on the short side that, that you've got to find a way to adjust to that, or else they're going to continue to run that little off counter on the short side of the field all night. Trips to the right side once again. Formation worked to the left the last drive. Now they switch it to the right. Hutchinson again off the left side. He's just going to bull his way forward inside the third or the 45 rather. Down to about the 42. Mosina, Cardenas, and Baker on the stop for the Greyhounds. Uh, again, I think they're just going to stay with this with uh, 254 to go, Scott. I think they're just going to stay with that formation to the wide side of the field and come back with. Uh, whoever they got, Hutchinson or Cox in the backfield and just come back short side. First down and 10 Bulldogs from the Greyhound, 42. Two to the right, one to the left. Hutchinson behind Moreland. Moreland rolls right, wanted to pitch. Instead, plants his left foot, turns it upfield. Inside the 40, inside the 35, and finally brought down at the 33. Speed option by Moreland. Does a nice job cutting back against the grain. Cardenas again on the stop along with Baker and uh, Tellis. Um, you know, this is a situation, Scott, where we got to find a way. We might want to think about calling the timeout, kind of stem the tide a little bit, make some adjustments before the half gets out. Gain of nine, second and one, di double tight end set, I should say, for Otomo. Wide out, split wide right and wide left with Hutchinson still. The single setback behind the quarterback. Here's a give, no, a keeper by nice Moreland and Sam Moreland able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Might have fallen forward maybe a half yard, but that makes him third and a half yard for a first down. Nice, responsible football. Jaeger has quarterback all the time on this option. He stayed with his read, was able to bring down Moreland. So they're going to bring out the chains. Hard to tell from this angle. It looked like he's about a half yard short, but they're going to check it out. The crew. Yeah, uh, I'll t you know what? I'll still take that defensive play anyway. It's, it, you had, you, you shorten up how many yards they got to get here. That was a rather emphatic steal of the chain yep. by the official. They're going to be short by the length of a football, but I've never seen an official forcibly take it from the guy running on the chain gang. They're going to, they're going to. Come up on the ball quick, Scott. Try to get a quick snap. Try to, my guess, try to quarterback sneak with Moreland. He's big enough with the offensive line to get that push forward. High formation. You're right, John. Moreland off the left side, but there's going to be a flag on the play. That'll be a nice break for us. Illegal formation on the Bulldogs. Looks like a procedure. So, yep. Well, they let the play go, so that's the legal formation. That's twice now, Scott. Yep, yep. That'll take it back outside the 35 to the 38. It'll be third down now and a long five. Still two down, two down territory for the Bulldogs here, Scott. Again, I would think they're probably going to come with trips to the wide side down on the bottom part of the field. Uh, and Isaiah Cox is checked back in for the Bulldogs. Don't be surprised they do that formation wide side like Cox running to the back side. Minute 38 remaining in the first half. 17 to 7, your score. Burlington on top. Clock now runs. I formation set behind Sam Moore. His brother Matt, the lead back. Isaiah Cox, the tail of the tandem. Sam with the play action oh, fake. Oh, wide nice open down the right sideline. They faked it to Cox as he Great went into play. the line, and he hits a wide open Matt Moreland for a touchdown. And it's 17 13. Scott, they've been running that downhill play, off tackle play. 
Matt Moreland's been coming down to try to get a block on the linebacker, whether it be Crabtree or Sherwood. This time he steps down to make it look like he's blocking and then breaks to the corner. Bring the corner in, Dot. Holen Thanner got caught up inside. Easy touchdown. So on to try the extra point is Kane Brumbaugh. Snap is good. Spot is wide. Good. Kick is also good. Buck 22 remaining before halftime. What was a walk away for the Greyhounds about seven minutes ago is now Burlington 17. A tumble 14 back in one minute on KBR and KBR.com. To coin an old phrase, we've come a long way, baby. This is Jerry Sherwood. 50 years ago, we started the Sherwood Company with two master sewers. Our main focus was utilitarian awnings to protect goods displayed in business storefronts from sun damage. As we moved into the 70s, we saw those awnings begin to shout inviting messages to potential passing customers. That is when the Sherwood Company's niche was born. Unique designs on a canvas background with first impressions that last. We still do canvas in its modern versions, backlit and architecturally integrated. But today, the Sherwood Company's design team can also incorporate programmable, changeable video and LED signage into any business signscape, inviting customers with come do business here messages. It's been quite a 50 year journey from the days of Canvas to the cutting edge technology of Bracewell Stadium's virtual scoreboard. Give us a call today. Let us help you design your first impressions that last. Back here at Merrill A. Miller Senior Family Field at Bracewell Stadium, Brumbaugh on the tee, and we're ready to get back underway, and he boots it away. Going to be into the end zone, and I'll tell you what, Tyler Messina got a little lax a days ago, and he was at the 10, the ball hit at the 3. If that ball takes a hop the other direction and not into the end zone, that's a free football. You betcha, and, uh, you know, I'm not sure why that happened, but, it, you know, we're glad that it rolled in so that we get the ball on the 20. Scott? We are still up by three points. Field goal was very good call on Zach Shea's part. We're up by three. We need to close out the half. However we do it, we got to close out the half. I don't care if we line up with Christian as a wide receiver and flip-flopping all the time. Just work our way down the field on a series of five-yard penalties. Yeah, however that works, we just need to make sure. We don't even need to come away with a score. We just need to be able to move the ball. Kind of regain some confidence. Minute 22 remaining in the first half. Burlington with all three timeouts, leading 17 to 14. And now you have to take a timeout because of a formation issue with the clock not running. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure why. I mean, that's just a personnel package issue that they're trying to get in. And when you got guys who are hurting, you know, they're not in the ball game. You got a young quarterback who hasn't directed a lot of the traffic. You've got... <laughs> You know, you got to remain calm. You know, I know there's some frustration that we're hearing out in the crowd, and I know the coaches are not very happy either, but, you know, you just got to keep your composure right now. You've got your timeout. Get yourself together. Kind of get one or two plays in your brain. You know, I, I would have loved to have us throw the ball right now, but we're not in a position to do that with a three-point lead. You know, and again, we got to kind of go back to maybe what we started with, just get into that base formation, that base flex bone, and run. Off tackle, run off tackle, come back with a little bit of counter. Uh, you know, it's what you know best. It's what you've executed best throughout the year. So get yourself there. Let the let the half run out. All you really need is a first down. You get your first first down, then you probably can let the clock But do you try and get aggressive and, and maybe try and get some points out of this if you can get a big gain on first down? You know, I would if I were on the 30. Something magical about being on the 20, I think, that, you know, you don't want to give them that short of the field or something were to happen negatively. Sherwood to the right, gravel to the left. Motion man coming this way is McLaughlin, and they just give it on a keeper. Actually, not a keeper. Connor handed it to Cameron Crabtree, who just ran into the belly of the beast and got yeah. stopped for a gain of one. You know, the big thing is, you know, what will a ton would do? They've got two timeouts left. Are they going to wait till it's third and long and call that second timeout so they have one timeout left to go in the half? Uh, we certainly don't want to let that clock go. Tick-tock, the clock running down, 53 seconds, Looks play like clock Shea. at 10. Coach Shea's going to call that timeout. He's going to wait. And it would appear Coach Wegman's calling for the heavy package. Yep. So 43 seconds remaining in the first half, the Greyhounds. You know, this might be the situation. You see Christian Cordero coming out. This may be their base formation where they do the switcheroo. 
run the stick and get guys flipped and give yourself an easy five yards. I would think, though, if I'm on the other side of the field and I'm the Atumwa defensive staff, I'm saying, you know, pull yourself off the ball about a half yard. You know you're in a good situation. You, anything can happen on your end will only be positive. Don't let anybody behind you. Don't jump off sides. Don't let things uh, fall Burlington's way right now. Well, the Greyhounds jumped up to a 17 nothing lead early in the second quarter, marking the highest point total of the season for the Greyhounds, but have seen a Tumwa in the span of about four minutes cut that lead down to three at 17-14, to and now we sit at 43 seconds remaining. And the Greyhounds have the football second and nine from their own 21 with one timeout remaining, a Tumwa with two. Scott, we're still looking at uh, Tykel Gordon getting some treatment on the sideline. There's Crabtree on the snap. Going to take it off the right side. Hurdles the defender. Spins out of the arms of another one. He's going to be dropped at the 24, a gain of three. And it'll be third and six. But now Atumwa's going to take its second time out of the half. Matt and Sam Moreland on the tackle. And that's, that's kind of what you, you knew was going to happen. There's 34 seconds left. you got to try to get a... a a play that's going to run some clock here. You've got to get outside, maybe run a sweep. You don't want to try to have a quick hitter. You certainly don't want to throw the ball right now. Don't want to give them any other extra time that you have. So you're going to want to make them call that last time out to try to either block the punt or set up the return. So something safe, something sure, something that's not going to be too tricky. But it has been a while since Christian has been <laughs> wide. Well, and if that happens and you get another... Another jump, it would make it a third and one. But, again, I go back to the if we're talking about it, I would like to think that the actual coaching staff would be thinking the same thing. But we're not on the uh, tumble bulldog staff. That's true. But the old adage goes, if you're thinking about it in the crowd, i got to believe that not any always. coaching staff is three steps ahead. You would like to think that. Knowing you, I know that's not true. Of course. Third down and six from the 24. 37 ticks remaining before halftime. Crabtree right up the gut. Going to be hit and dropped. Maybe even lost a yard. Now Tumma's going to take its final timeout with 31 seconds remaining in the half. And the Greyhounds have to kick it away on fourth and five. Simple dive. Uh, and, you know, you, you got to clean that linebacker out. Matt Morneling comes in for the tackle. You know, I know people in the country saying, hey, we got to make things happen. Really, at this time, you don't want to make anything happen. You want to make sure that you secure the ball, that you get a ball punted safely away now because you're going to give the ball back to the Bulldogs with probably, what, 24, 23 seconds left time for about two plays. Play some prevent defense. They've got momentum. They're gonna, we're going to have to go in and make some adjustments with our blocking schemes, come up with a, a game plan that has us throw the ball a little bit, and we got to make our adjustments on defense to that formation with the run coming to the weak side. So uh, kick the ball away safe, go away with the lead, because if the game were to end right now, Greyhounds are now 2-6, two, two and six, and that's what we kind of want. Can we stop it at halftime? No. Is that an option? That is not an option, and we don't want to. We want to go for it. Well, we do, but, uh, you know, at certain points, you might say, I'll take a victory anyway and get it. Now, I understand what you're saying. Nick Batterson dropped back for the third time And that could be our best tonight. weapon right now. <laughs> <laughs> Flip the field with another Batterson faux pas. Or Spencer's been known to get one off of his foot for good yardage, so this would be a good time for him to hit one. Sherwood at his own 10, gets a snap, steps into it. And but end over end, went off the side of his foot. Get off hit the helmet. And oh, no, oh, go, 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 go. It hit Isaiah Cox. No, not Cox. That's Jawan. Jawan Bridges. That ball had backspin on it like a kickoff. When it hit, it ricocheted backward, and Bridges just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hit him in the chest, and falling on it, was that Camilo Cardenas? Yeah, it was, and I got to tell you, you know, Patterson's waving everybody off. He's calling Peter Punt, Peter Punt, Peter Punt. He's trying to get everybody away. Bridges doesn't see where it's coming from, bounces right back into his face mask. You kind of feel bad for the kid, but what a great break for the Greyhounds. Well, 21 seconds, ball resting at the Greyhound, 48. You got one timeout left. Now I would take a shot. Crabtree. There it is. Back to pass. Throws deep down the right side. He wants Sherwood, who gets held up. No call. Ah, uh, there's no that, call there. Really? No, there's not. I mean, you know, I know people are going to argue that. 
I know the staff's upset, but really in a situation they're both trying to run for the ball. Methinks that you are much more level-headed up here with a headphone on your face. I'm also undefeated from up here. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> and my guess is down on the sideline, you I might been be a thinking bit, a little, be a little bit different for yeah, me. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, you know, put on your coach that. That was interference. I Make the call. Come on, Stripes. They did. Second and 10 from the 48. 15 seconds remaining. Crabtree again. This time it'll just keep it right up the middle. Cuts Midfield. off the back side. Into a tumble territory to the 43. Take your time out right here. Yeah. Close to a first down. Six seconds, five seconds, gonna four. Go. And Zach's going to say, let's get off the field and take a lead to the locker room. So that's what he's going to do. We put 24 in the books. We got 24 to go. I spoke very prematurely when I said felt like a victory. It's quite the ball game right now. Burlington 17, Otumwa 14. We'll take a five-minute timeout, and when we come back, we'll recap the first half and preview the second half right here on KBUR and KBUR.com.
we have a special honor this evening. We are proud to announce the Iowa Cheerleading Coaches Association has named Cherry Reed as their 2015 Lifetime Achievement winner for her contributions to cheerleading in both her school district and the state of Iowa. Cherry will be recognized for this honor on November 7th at the Cheerleading State Championships as well as later in November at the State Football Championships. But tonight, we recognize her at home. Let's hear it for our grand cheerleading coach of 27 years, Coach Cherry Reed. And we are back here at Bracewell Stadium, Merrill A. Miller Senior Family Field is second half action right around the corner between the Greyhounds and the Bulldogs. The battle for the Doghouse, who as lore goes, has always gone to the loser in this series. So we've got 24 minutes to figure out who either keeps the doghouse or it goes back west. We got 24 minutes to put the Bulldogs in the doghouse. That's the goal. So Caleb Moser will put it back up on the tee and we're about ready to go. <laughs> 17 to 14, Greyhounds on top. Back deep for a tumble at his own five is Isaiah Hutchinson. A little bit of a gap there over on the 40. All right, here comes Jackson running. Back underway as Mosier kicks it to Hutchinson from the 13. Picks it up off the ground, cuts back at the 20. 25, 30, he's got running room down the near side, 40, 45, and ridden down literally by three purple shirts, but in Burlington territory at the 47. So a great return on the opening kickoff of the second half by Isaiah Hutchinson. That is not the stop that we were looking for. I'm glad we got the tackle. Nice run by Hutchinson on the bobble. Sometimes when you get those bobbles, your coverage team has a tendency to kind of slow up and kind of wait to jump on the ball. Uh, but good field position for the Bulldogs. So the Greyhound defense up against it right off the bat here in half number two. Sam Moreland behind the center. Gives it to Isaiah Cox. And Cox is going to be ridden down from behind. A gain of about two, maybe three if they give him the 44, but it'll be second and long. Zizon, Shaker coming, Zizon Baker coming out of the bottom of the pile there with Drake Yeager and Tremel Tellis for the, for the Greyhounds. Second down and seven as they spot it at the 44-yard line. Sam Moreland barks out the signals and as has become customary tonight, looks over the sideline, gets the signal from his coaching staff. Cox about two yards behind him. Puts it in Cox's belly. Keeps it himself. Sam Moreland around the right side. Falls forward to the 35. And enough for an attempt of first down. Just, just the alignment there, Scott. Our linebackers are lined up stacked over the tight end. And when they run that zone read, they got to come in and try to honor that dive back, which leaves the quarterback open all by himself. That really becomes the end responsibility. So they've got to find that adjustment here very quickly. First down and 10 from the Greyhound, 36. Opening drive of the second half. Just underway. Thanks so much for joining us on KBUR and KBUR.com. Burlington, 17. Atumbo, 14. Here's a give. Isaiah Cox, no keeper by Sam. And Sam's going to be dropped at uh, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a loss of a half yard for Sam Moreland. Nice defensive call. They slid the defensive end down inside, said, you're going to take dive back. Let the outside linebackers take the quarterback and Camilo Cardenas with the nice stop. Give him the line of scrimmage, so no gain on the play. Second down and 10. One wide out either side. Single setback is Cox. He remains in the ballgame. One yard behind Moreland. Moreland, right, pitches it back to Cox. He's got the corner, yep. and he falls forward as he's tackled on the play by Adam Wegman, a gain of about five to the 31. Nice flow by Adam. He's got pitchback responsibilities on that speed option. Filled the hole nicely. Great job on the top side there with Drake Hohenthaler. He's got to keep that outside leverage again. Bring the 
bring the play to the inside, let the safety finish it off. Let's tell him a good field position on the opening kickoff. Here's Cox yes. at the left oh. side hit. Now he jumps outside, and nice. he's brought down by Tyler Messina. Open field tackle at the 30, a gain of one, and that would have been a first down had Tyler not made that stop. Mark that play, Mace. That might be the play that turns things around. This is four down territory for the Bulldogs, but that could have been something that could have been really ugly for the Greyhounds, and Tyler did a nice job of making a stop. On a back who, uh, from this position, looks like a lot bigger player than Tyler. Well, and it was a similar play that Isaiah Cox did in the end zone on Adam Wegman where he just tried to put his his yep. helmet in between the twos on Messina's jersey, and this time Messina brought him down. Okay, now this is the situation with trips on the right where they're going to try to run back uh, in the pass onto the short side. Just got the play away. Sam Moreland going nice. to roll right. Go, Tramiel. Now he's going to be pursued and run down almost, and he completes the pass along the far sideline to his brother, Matt. Man, nice nice job, Jamel. So close to the sack there. Moreland makes the move to get outside and makes the pass complete. Owen Tanner on the stop. Come back, move the chains. We've got to get a stop here soon. Pass complete down to the 24-yard line. A gain of seven. They needed five. Trips to the left side for Atelma. Sam Moreland again barks out signals, then looks to his right. Side in to the right, trips to the left. Cox still in the game as the tailback. Sam Moreland going to follow Cox into the hole, and he's going to be hit and dropped at about the 20, a gain of about four. It'll be second and mid, about six to go. Crabtree, Baker, uh, tell us again on the stop. I'm not sure what that fake was by Moreland. Just kind of looked up over here at the press box. I thought I was making sure. Did you wave at him? Was okay. No, I did not want to wave at him unless he was going to drop the ball. But again, Scott, they're putting all that formation, all the players out here, spreading the box out a little bit. High formation set. Cox the tail of the tandem. Five yards deep. They give it to him off the right side. And Isaiah Cox shakes one tackler, can't shake another, but he may drag a couple of tacklers inside the 15. He'll be near a first down. Looks like they're going to be about a yard short. They spotted on the 15. Yeah, Camille Cardenas had a hold of his leg, and he was kind of twisting around, slowed him up just a little bit before Zion. And Spencer could come up with the tackle before he got across to the first down mark. Third down and one from the 15. Tight eye formation. Sam Moreland gives it to Cox again off the right side. Just finds a little sliver in the offensive line. It gains two to the 13, but enough for another Bulldog first down. Simple trap play. Just the tight eye trap play down to the tight end side. Zy Baker and uh, Spencer again on the tackle. We hear their name a lot here in the last couple plays. Uh, I, you know, it's one of those four formulas I think they're just going to stay with and march all the way through to the end zone. If we don't find a way to find a stunt, bring a linebacker, something, maybe even an stunt up front with your defensive line, slant them, whatever. Gain of three down to the 12. So first down and 10 now for the Bulldogs from the Greyhound 12. Isaiah Cox, again off the left side. I don't think that's Cox. No. That was no. Number 20, so that's, that's Isaiah Hutchinson. Hutchinson. So Hutchinson with the carry. He doesn't run as hard as Cox does. Not as big as Cox is. He got one to the 11. I'm not sure if Tyler Messina made the tackle or if Hutchinson ran over Messina. I mean, it's a nice, you know, we got that, you know, only two yards. But Tyler's wobbly just a little bit right now. Second and nine from the 11. Motion man from right to left. Fake to Hutchinson. Rolling right as Sam Moreland throws into the end no zone, good. intended for Brad Bramschreiber, and he had it. Would have been a touchdown if he'd been able to hold on, but it went through his hands. Then he got popped. He might have dropped it anyway. Owen Tanner and Crabtree there were kind of breaking up the play. That's just a tight end drag off the play action. Send your, send your one tight end in motion, run the play action boot the other way. And for all the crap we gave him for shot putting in the first half, he's made a couple of nice throws here. Yeah, this I mean, drive. it's still a shot put, but it's getting to where <laughs> it needs to be. Sam Moreland still at quarterback. Isaiah Hutchinson behind him. They pitch it to Hutchinson off the left side. Buries his shoulder down to about the five. He's going to be two yards short of the first down. So it'll be fourth down and two from the five, and we'll see what Atelma wants to do. Baker and Mosina being workhorses right now on the tackle for the Greyhounds. Big, big, big stop right here. Fourth and two, ball resting on the five. Got to watch the ball. Don't be drawn offside to get an easy first down. Got, but you got to play on the on the balls of your feet and get penetration, get off the block. You know it's going to go to Cox somewhere. So 
First down, or fourth down rather, and two yards to go. Once again, kind of a tight eye formation, offset eye. Give to Cox off the right side. He's got the first down, but he's tripped up at the two. Tripped up the two by Spencer Sherwood again. Just kind of caved down that whole right side of that defensive line, Scott. And you know, now you're really now you're really up against it. You gotta find a way to get some goal line defense in here and get a stop. Maybe get a turnover. You know, they haven't had a, a trip up of their own here in the last seven, eight plays. Now they're gonna ring the sticks out. They're gonna measure this. I well, thought he had it by exciting. a full yard. Yeah. There might have been some some pleading over there by some of the Greyhound defenders about hey, I think we need to get a measure here. I think just by the tip, Scott. First down by the length of a football. Well, buddy, we gotta we gotta get our energy going for these guys. Gotta get them up, get a stop here. Anything can happen. Fumble, fumbled snap, anything. First down and goal from the two. 17 to 14 grounds on top. Five and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Sam Moreland gives it to Cox off the right side. Just kind of walks into the end zone. Touchdown to Tumwa. Pistol power eye. It's hard to stop from two yards away. It's one of the, it's, it's a confidence issue now. You know, going to be a four-point swing, Scott. we got to find a way just to kind of get ourselves back, move the ball, get some first downs. And to try the extra point, Kane Brumbaugh. This would make it 21 to 17. Snap is good. Spot is good. Kick is also good. 524 remaining third quarter. Snell at Telma 21, Burlington 17. Back in one minute on KBR and KBR.com. To coin an old phrase, we've come a long way, baby. This is Jerry Sherwood. 50 years ago, we started the Sherwood Company with two master sewers. Our main focus was utilitarian awnings to protect goods displayed in business storefronts from sun damage. As we moved into the 70s, we saw those awnings begin to shout inviting messages to potential passing customers. That is when the Sherwood Company's niche was born. Unique designs on a canvas background with first impressions that last. We still do canvas in its modern versions, backlit and architecturally integrated. But today, the Sherwood Company's design team can also incorporate programmable, changeable video and LED signage into any business signscape, inviting customers with come do business here messages. It's been quite a 50-year journey from the days of Canvas to the cutting-edge technology of Bracewell Stadium's virtual scoreboard. Give us a call today. Let us help you design your first impressions that last. Back here at Merrill A. Miller Senior Family Field at Bracewell Stadium, 21 to 17. Now a tumble on top. It's first lead of the night. Time to answer back, Rayhounds. Get yourself a great kickoff return. Brumball with the approach in the boot, and it's going to be taken on the far side by Tyler Messina. Has it go through his hands? Picks it up, retreats back to the five, and he's going to be brought down at the nine. You know what? God, I know they're trying to set up on this right side return. I just think Mason and Tremel need to move over a little bit because they, they're they definitely trying to kick it to Tyler over on that far left side of the field. So just let's get it move over there. I'm not sure what happened there on the return. Uh, talked about it getting a little slippery or more dewy here tonight. Maybe the ball just slips through his hands. They mark it at the eight. So the Greyhounds start in the shadow of their own goal post. First and ten from their own eight-yard line. Spencer Sherwood split wide to the left. Crabtree and Connor again behind center, and Crabtree gets a direct snap. Bulls his way across the 10, up near the 13, a gain of about five. Got a host of Bulldog defenders there on the tackle, uh, led by number one, uh, Dennis Kurtz. And, you know, again, really a, a manageable second down here, Scott. You're at second and five. You can run or pass. Situation, maybe get outside. Uh, focus seems to be running on the short side of the field. Second and five from the 13-yard line. Still Connor and Crabtree behind center. Nobody to the right side except for the tight end. They'll run it left. Now cuts it back right as Crabtree across the 15 to the 16. Trying to run the trap here to the back side, make it look like they're running that off tackle. 
Just we'll come back with a trap, and just a little bit too soon on the cutback. Got a text from Brad Honig, who's either up in Minneapolis or listening or following oh. maybe on a webcast or something like that. Either way, he knows it's 7-7 seven to seven at halftime between West Burlington, Notre Dame, and Minneapolis. Big game up there. Third down and two. Big play right here from the 16-yard line. Crabtree again off the right side. And he's got a first yep. down up by, near the 20 by about a yard. Yep, nice job. Good play. Mason Hartman grabbing his left ankle right now. This was going to call a timeout. Matt Moreland on the tackle for the Bulldogs. Hartman remains on his back at about the 15-yard line. Alex Johnson comes in to replace him as the B-back, Scott. Uh, the one big problem there is that... Alex would not be eligible for a pass if they decide to run that rollout. He'd have to stay in and block on the edge, which, you know, with the pressure that it's almost putting on him, may not be the worst thing in the world at this point. Well, while they tend to Mason Hartman, we'll step away. We'll take a one-minute timeout. 21-17 to at Tumwa on top of Burlington, midway through th quarter number three. Back in one minute on KBR and KBR.com. You drive a car, you own a home, and you need insurance on both. So why not see if you can save some money in the process? I'm Crystal of Carlos Captavila Agency. When you insure both your home and your auto with American Family Insurance, you may qualify for a substantial money-saving discount. Interested? Call me at 752-1479. American Family Insurance Mutual and Standard of Ohio and Wisconsin Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin, 53783. Carlos Captavila Agency supports local athletes. We are your neighbors, your co-workers. We are the future. And we believe in our community. And that, by shopping local, buying local, and banking local, we can create a healthier community. Making friends, building relationships, Join us. Case Bind Community Credit Union. Keeping it local. It's where you belong. Case Bind Community Credit Union. Conveniently located at 2115 Des Moines Avenue and 485 West Burlington Avenue. Federally insured through the NCUA and an equal opportunity housing lender. Back to action down here at Bracewell Stadium. And they tried the dipsy do switcheroo as the left side of the line Moved to the right, nobody jumped, and Crabtree took it off the right side for a gain of about four and a half up near the 24, so it'll be second down and a long five. Again, you know what, we are long five, but we're moving the chains. I, you know, we've got to be patient. You're only down four. Three and a half minutes remaining here in the third. Crabtree again sweeping right side, no gain, maybe one as he got to the 25. What, the thing that's happening right now is Matt Moreland is certainly setting the edge against uh, our wingbacks, which would be uh, um, Tyler and Alex Johnson, Alex Nelson, excuse me. He's just doing a nice job of setting that edge so that we have to make a decision as a running back to cut inside. I just think if we stretch ourselves just a little bit more, we got Tyler on the edge to block to get us there. Mason Hartman back in the ball game after taking a playoff. Third down and four from the 25. Tyler Connor going to roll left. Throw left, has Sherwood across the 35, makes the catch. Nice catch and securing of the ball as he was hit right after he caught the ball. Holds on to it. They're going to give him the 36-yard line. A nice pickup and another Greyhound first down. Nice play. They've been, they're daring you to throw. And I know that it's easy from this part of the field where you can just say, just throw the ball. But you got to remember, they play pretty good pass defense with their speed. Gain of 11 on third down. So it's first and 10 now from the Greyhound, 36. Counter now as Crabtree gives it to Messina off the left side. Turns up field at the left hash into a tumble territory. And he's going to be brought down at the 40-yard line. A gain of 24 yards on first down. And again, the Greyhounds move the chains. Juwan. Juwan Bridges, or, yep, Juwan Bridges again along with number nine, Gabe Bowling on the tackle. Nice timing for that counter play. Good run by Tyler. So first down at 10. Now at the Bulldog 40-yard line. Grounds trailing by four. Here's Crabtree off the right side. And again, oh, still on his feet. Inside the 35-30 and brought down at the 28-yard line. Outstanding individual effort on a gain of 12 by Cameron Crabtree, who was stopped after a gain of about four. That's the effort you've been looking to see, that we've been looking to see. Again, Gabe booking on the tackle for the Bulldogs. And, you know... You know, we get confidence. That catch was a big confidence play. So first and 10 from the 28 of Ottumwa. 
Greyhounds on the move. Started this drive back at their own eight. Now they do the switch oh, and now we jump. jump. Josh Wallerick, the left guard, decided to block instead of move from left to right. Right now, this is a situation where you got to all look at yourself and be in purple and green and say, we're okay. We're okay. We're going to come back. We're going to get the next one. You can't. You can't let this thing be the one that hurts you so that you can't get a ball in the end zone. So first and 15 now, back at the 33-yard line. Spencer Sherwood tight to the right side, but he is your wide receiver that way. Connor going to roll right, rolling right, going to be hit and dropped outside the 40 by Bram Schreiber. Toughest thing to do when you have a one-man route is be able to stand there and wait when you got all that pressure coming at you. And I know that your first first full game is that as a starter, but you got to not take a sack. You got to understand that you got to get rid of the ball or run. Five-yard penalty, eight-yard loss on a sack, and it's now second down, 23 as the ball rests at the 41-yard line. Scott, it's been about... Four, four weeks since Cedar Rapids Prairie when you saw the Statue of Liberty play. Don't be surprised if that gets pulled out here. Sherwood right, gravel left. Motion man from left to right is McLaughlin. Connor will roll right, throws right. Has nice Messina catch. a beautiful catch at the 20 as he leaped in the air, caught the football and fell forward for a gain of 21. It'll be third down and two from the 20. There's your wheel route, Scott. Ran the curl wheel. Uh, Tyler, the ball thrown a little bit behind him, did a nice job of getting up in the air, turning himself around, catching with the ball inbounds. Third down and two. Gravel will come wide to the right side. Jesse Bolander wide to the left. Crabtree now behind Connor. Give to McLaughlin. He's going to try and sweep it left, and I don't understand that call necessarily. You need two, and you try and go wide side of the field, and you lose two. Well, you try to get it to somebody who hasn't had the ball. You know that somebody's keying on Crabtree, so you're trying to do something different. You're in two-down territory, so you're going to try to do what you can do. Quarter runs out. We've got one more to play here. Scott got a chance to get a first down. 36 in the books. we got 12 to go. Put your four fingers in the air. We're headed to quarter number four. Atumla now leads Burlington 21-17. When we come back, the Greyhounds have a fourth down and four from their own 22 on KBUR and KBUR.com. Barn River Glass does kitchens. Yes, they do. Whether you want to upgrade your countertops or do your entire kitchen, commercial or residential, Barn Grover's cabinet expert is Bonnie Samuels. Just give her a call. She'll sit down with you at your home or business, build a computerized design, give you a free quote, and work with you till the job is done. Remodeling your bathroom? Barn Grover's does that, too. Barn Grover Glass serves Burlington, Iowa City, and the surrounding areas. You live for it. Touchdown, Iowa. Nobody laid a glove on him other than his teammates who were mobbing him right now in the end zone. You love it. Son, a quarterback keeper. Down he goes. That's a sack. It's what you do every weekend. Every pass, run, tackle, and touchdown is right here. Iowa travels to Northwestern this Saturday morning at 9. Brought to you by Carlos Captavila, American Family Insurance, the Danville State Savings Bank, and by the Sherwood Company on News Radio 1490 KBUR. Fourth down and four from the Atoma 22 as we start quarter number four. Connor rolling right, throws down the seam, had a man in Spencer Sherwood and overshot him, incomplete. And the Greyhounds turn it over on downs. Not a bad, not a bad play there, just the little ball overthrown. Spencer did all he could to get up in the air and to get the catch. Now comes the important part of your defense. Can you stay intact to get a three and out, get a turnover, get yourself a chance to score. You got a lot of time left on the clock. So Atama will take over on downs. First and 10 from its own 22 yard line. 11.55 remaining in the game. Bulldogs lead by four. Got a coverage situation here. Got two guys playing deep almost stacked over the top of each other. Scott, I'm not sure what that's about. Sam Moreland with the snap, and Isaiah, no, he keeps it, Moreland does. And I'll tell you what, Sam Moreland read that perfectly because Mason Hartman came up and just absolutely annihilated Isaiah Cox. But when Sam Moreland saw it, he moved the ball from Cox's gut, took it right up the middle for a gain of 12 and a first down. 
Man, Spencer Sherwood and Mosina on the tackle there. Great read by Moreland. Talk about making that zone read that there's never a bad read, only really great ones, and that was one of them. Going to hold the clock here for as much as they can. If Isaiah Cox takes that football, he loses four back to the 20. Now here's another keeper by Sam Moreland, and Moreland up to the 38 for a gain of about four. You got to get your assignment football under t- in check here, Scott. You got to make sure that your ends have the dive back, your linebackers have the quarterback, safety and corner have the pitch man here if that's the setup on, on defending this option. Second down and six from the 38-yard line. Sam Moreland this time straight ahead to Isaiah Cox, and he hurdles a tackler up across the 40. Brought down by Spencer Sherwood, but a gain of four to the 42. It'll be second and, or third and two, rather. Okay, they've been most effective on that little trap when they've had either the tight end in motion or they've had a double tight, double flanker, and that's what they've got right now, double tight, double flanker. Third down and two from the 42. And there's Cox the off the left side. Going to be dropped by Sherwood Got at the squeeze. 41. Got maybe. squeeze. Stays on his feet. Run out of bounds. Did he get the first down? I Spencer don't know. Sherwood had, I don't had know. him at the 40. Nope, Scott. I'm going to disagree with you. It looks like they got him just back to the line of scrimmage, which oh, makes it fourth and one. Spencer Sherwood had him for a three-yard loss back to the 40, but Isaiah Cox was able to use his strength and spin free from the taller Sherwood. And it's a gain of one to the 43. So fourth down and one in negative territory for Atumwa. They turn it over. They give it to the Greyhounds in Bulldog territory. Sam Moreland under center. Just going to take it straight ahead. I would guess no, he's going to give it to Cox. Cuts it off the right side. Stiff arm Sherwood across the 45. Brought down at the 49 for another Atumwa first down. That's just a nice job of running right there. We sent the house. Everybody plugged the gap. Sherwood was right there to make the tackle. Cox just does a nice job with a stiff arm and get outside. Horn Tanner to save the touchdown. Gain of six. So another first down for the Bulldogs. First down and ten from their own 49. Oh, there's Moreland hands back behind him, and all he can do is fall back on it at the 36 at the loss of 13 yards. All right, there's the break we need, Scott. We've got that big fumble off the snap. We're in a second and forever situation. Don't let Moreland get a chance to throw the ball anywhere specific. Contain Cox and Moreland on the run. Get a chance to get the ball back off the punt. Loss of 12. It'll be second and 22 as the ball rests at the 37-yard line. One receiver split to either side. Tight eye formation behind Moreland. Cox dots the eye. No, that's Hutchinson. For Isaiah sure. Hutchinson going to sweep it left. Sure. He's across the 40 and hogtied at the 40. And now there there's going to be a late flag. You're going to call that a horse collar. He got help from the coaching staff on that side. And it wasn't a true horse collar in the no. sense of the word. That's a isn't the definition you pull him down from behind. That unless that's he just a high some tackle. Of, unless he grabs some of the face mask, Scott. I agree with you. I don't think. This is the one time I'm on the sideline with my own headset saying, I don't think that's a horse collar. I think that makes it a third down. No, I would. I know the referee, Jerry Winter, is trying to signal that, but I don't don't agree with that call at all. Personal foul, face mask. All right. Well, that at least is a little more acceptable. So that's going to take it into Burlington Territory to the 39. So it would have been third down and 12. Now it's first and 10 at the Greyhound 39-yard line. Scott, I, I know I'm thinking ahead, but we cannot afford to give up another score. I don't think we got enough juice in us to score twice. We got to find a way to get a turnover or turn it over on downs. First and 10 from the Greyhound 39. Need a big play. Need a momentum shifter. Here's Hutchinson off the right side. Being pursued and brought down on the near side by Jerry Cohen Tanner. Nice. That's a pursuit by several Greyhounds and then coming up to make the play in Hohen Tanner. That's exactly what we needed. Nice job by Drake. That's the right kind of pursuit angle to take, fight off the blocker, and take that. Where are we at, Scott? Second and eight. Gain of two to the 37. Clock becoming a factor at 840. (laughs) 
8.40, 8.35. By the time we get this snapped, it'll be under 8.30, and somebody's really upset down there. Here's a pitch now. Hutchinson trying to sweep it left side. Able to escape the tackle of Sherwood. Stays on his feet for another first down down to the 28-yard line. A gain of about nine yards. Got Messina again on the tackle. Just doing the guys up front on the offensive line for the Bulldogs. Just doing a nice job of blocking right now. First down and 10 now at the Greyhound 28-yard line. Single setback, still Isaiah Cox as they send one receiver to either side. Wide side of the field is the right. This is the Greyhound sideline. Sam Moreland puts it in Cox's stomach. And Isaiah Cox inside the 25 to the 23. Brought down by Brock Garlow that time for the Greyhounds. Dyson Baker now checking back in for the for the Hounds. We've got, you know, Scott, it's just you know, you're hoping against hope right now. Just to kind of stem the tide here. Get another high snap. That would be great. Gain of five on the play. Second down and five now at the 23-yard line. Here's Moreland off the right side. Sam Moreland with running room inside the 15 and spun down at about the 11. A gain of 13 yards. You just get a sense of fatigue right now, don't you, Scott? That our guys just are kind of, you know, they're a little slow getting up. It, you know, just got to get some emotion somewhere to get yourself a stop. Counting down towards seven minutes. The clock will be inside of seven minutes. When the play is snapped, play clock at 13. First down and 10 from the Greyhound 12. Give to Cox. Right up the gut, left side. And he's got yardage inside the 10 down to about the 8. Gain of 4. Maybe five, depending on the spot. Might have given him the seven. Crabtree and, and uh, McClellan on the tackle. Second and five from inside the ten. Got to hold a tumble to a field goal and keep this a one-score game. This time, Cox will keep it right up the gut, and he stopped, tripped up at the five. Going to be about two short of the first down. Garlo again on the stop for the Greyhounds. Nice job by the tackle. Junior inside. Two big plays here. Need two big plays. Third down and two from the five. Moreland, five yards behind center. Gets the snap. Keeps it. Stumbles. Stays on his feet. Falls forward so. inside the five. I think he might be a half a yard short. Looks by the mark that he is. Nice job. We got Tellus and... Camilo Cardenas on the tackle. Nice job by those guys, the linebackers, getting fairly good push. Now, Scott, again, this is the last time that we've talked about on the other side of the field where they're going to run that trap again. you got to find a way to stop that push, get off the block. Now a timeout going to be taken by Coach Zach Shea okay, he's and going the Burlington Greyhounds. Looks like he's going to his goal line. Well, while he talks it over, we'll step away as well. 543 remaining in the fourth quarter. Atoma 21, Burlington 17, back in one minute on KBUR at KBUR.com. To coin an old phrase, we've come a long way, baby. This is Jerry Sherwood. Fifty years ago, we started the Sherwood Company with two master sewers. Our main focus was utilitarian awnings to protect goods displayed in business storefronts from sun damage. As we moved into the 70s, we saw those awnings begin to shout inviting messages to potential passing customers. That is when the Sherwood Company's niche was born. Unique designs on a canvas background with first impressions that last. We still do canvas in its modern versions, backlit and architecturally integrated. But today, the Sherwood Company's design team can also incorporate programmable, changeable video and LED signage into any business signscape. Inviting customers with come do business here messages. It's been quite a 50-year journey from the days of Canvas to the cutting-edge technology of Bracewell Stadium's virtual scoreboard. Give us a call today. Let us help you design your first impression that lasts. Third down and half a yard, and Sam... No. Well, is there he's a not, He's not there? in the end zone. He's not he in the end zone. He got a first down. down. Sam Moreland with a keeper. 
They're Make running it. that. They're running that zone read on that fourth down play. And Zy Baker's coming off the field, and you got to let people know that you're coming off the field. Thank you, Jerry. Jerry Winter, the official, finally noticing Zy's a little banged up and had to come off. Call the referee's timeout. Looking at Zy, I'm not sure what he's talking about. Looks like it's his hand or his shoulder. So first down and goal at the one for Atumwa. Score right here would make it a steep hill to climb. Five and a half minutes remaining. Going left side. Sam Moreland oh. takes it in off the right side. Nice Touchdown, 27-17. He had that jab step to the left. So with 5.24 remaining in the fourth quarter, it's now a Tumwa 27. And Burlington 17. Atumwa with two second-half scores exactly one quarter apart. They scored with 5.24 remaining in the third, and now 5.24 remaining in the fourth. Brumbon to try his fourth extra point of the night. Snap, spot, and kick are good. 5.24 remaining in the fourth, 28-17. So close. So close to stepping through that, Drake Cohen Tanner and... uh, James Anderson along with Tremel tell us so close to getting that. Well, it's now a two-score game. Got to get this one quick. We got to. I'm not sure we can set up to go a right side return if they're going to push this ball all the way onto the, our left side. I think we got to try to get on the left side. Hope we make that adjustment. 28 unanswered points for Atelmo since Burlington led 17 to nothing with 8:44 remaining in the second quarter. 28 unanswered on the strength of two Isaiah Cox uh, Cox touchdown runs, a Mitch Moreland touchdown reception, and a Sam Moreland touchdown run. Kane Brunball with it back on the tee, and we're about ready to get back underway. He'll put it just inside the right hash as he kicks it away. Messina and Crabtree back inside their own 10 to receive. You know, Scott, we haven't seen anything of Tykel Gordon in the second half. I'm not even sure if I see him on the sidelines. Not since he kind of took an odd step on his yeah. second or third carry of the night. Brumbaugh kicks it away, going to be taken on the near side. By Crabtree at the 10. Taking it far side. Now plants and tries to come back this way. We're just not getting back in time enough to get a block. Got too many white shirts running past our purple shirts. Return of four yards to the 14. So it'll be first down and 10 as the Greyhounds start 86 yards away from the goal line. I'm not sure if we got quick plays here. I know that we should probably should be throwing here first down. I like the concept of that curl wheel that they had out of their base formation. I hope they kind of get going on that. Coming off to this short side here, Scott. So first down and 10 from the 14-yard line. Now whistles as the Tom was going to take a timeout. Got a chance to maybe rethink what you want to do here. I'm not sure if you're going to stay with it. Give yourself a break and see what you can do. I still go back to the third down and two play when you've got some momentum. Yep. And you decide to run it with Cullen McLaughlin, and it's nothing against Cullen McLaughlin except for the fact that you've got a horse in Cameron Crabtree. You were coming off a turnover. You were coming off a big second down and 23 pass to make it third and yeah. two. And then you don't, you're not able to use that momentum. Instead, yeah. you take a loss of two, and you face fourth and four to open the fourth quarter. I just I keep going back to that one play when you had the momentum retrieved on the big pass play. Yeah, that certainly was a momentum killer and a drive killer for us. Uh, but, you know, you could sense that Atumwa was kind of getting untracked all night. Uh, early in the second quarter when Isaiah Cox started to roll offensively and gave them a second weapon between him and Moreland. So first down and 10 from the Greyhound 14. Spencer Sherwood wide to the left side. That's the short side of the field. Crabtree, high snap, just takes it off the right side. Going to be hit after a gain of one and driven backward. Yep, Matt Moreland in number 68. Again, for the uh, Bulldogs, that's uh, 
Joe Hartley on the stop for the Bulldogs. We can't we can't go two yards, two yards, two yards. We got, we got to find a way to get out and get something done just a little bit faster. Gain of three to the 17, second down and seven. Crabtree and Connor behind the center. Jackson Villan. Connor back to pass. Looking right. Throws deep down the right side. Wanted Sherwood. Ooh. Almost picked off. As he overshot Sherwood by a couple of yards. And almost on the interception was Henry Outflish. You know, and really we're down to running one and two man routes. And I know we got to try to find protection as best we can. But now you're in a situation where you are you have no other choice but to throw or to try to get wide. And we've struggled getting wide since the beginning of the second quarter, Mace. Could come back here with counter. Third down and eight from the 22. Counter, as you called it, Crabtree gives it to Messina, who tries to plow his way off the right Not side. Enough. He's up across the 20 to the 21. It's fourth and three, and you're way too deep to typically do this, but you got to go for it now. Fourth down right. and three from the 21. You're one and six. And you know you're not you know you're not going to the playoffs, so you might as well go ahead and, and try to make something happen for yourselves. Come back and counter again. You can go back and run and and out. Here comes Christian on the switch. Atomo holds firm as they switch sides from left to right. Ooh. Crabtree gonna take it off the right side, follows Connor into the hole. He's got a first there down across the twenty-five to the 26, but the clock goes down inside of four minutes at 3.59. Second time that number 63, Josh Walwick for the Greyhounds has been slow to get up. Not sure what, what's ailing him right at this point, but he's just not moving at full speed. Back to Tip has kind of looked back at the sideline saying, hey, there might be an issue. And he got a first down, but it took you four plays to go 12 yards, and you've eaten up a minute and a half. And you got to take a look at your corner here. Number nine is about 9 to 10 yards off. Crabtree nice sweeps it left side. Nice gain across the 30 to the 35. A gain of 9. But the clock will keep going at 3.30. Hartley on the tackle again for the Bulldogs. But now you're looking at a second and one. I'm telling you, number 9 for the Bulldogs, Gabe Bowling, is about 12 yards off the line of scrimmage. As is Juwan uh, Bridgman, or sorry, Bridge is. A situation where you can throw a little outer hitch. Second and one from the 35. Connor rolling yep. right. There you go. Get Tucks rid of the ball. Runs and now throws and almost picked off across the 45 as he wanted Sherwood yet again. But that ball was thrown short and knocked down by Sam Moreland, it looks like. But I will say Tip did a nice job of stopping his rollout and coming up inside to make that throw give us at least a chance. Got another chance here to run that counter or come back off tackle. You need to get the first down here within this play so you can keep the, keep the drive going and the clock still. You talked about Tykel Gordon earlier. He actually has his shoes off on the sideline. Tyler Messina with the counter is going to get up near the 40 to the 39, another first down. But they have actually taken Tykel Gordon's shoes away. And, and I'm not, it doesn't look like an ankle. It looks like something else. But I tell you, nice run by Mosina gives us a chance. Three minutes. First down and 10 from the 39. Crabtree right up the gut again. He's got some running room. 45, 50 into Atoma territory to the 46. And the clock will start as they, or stop rather, as they move the chains at 251. You know, the thing about that is Kimar and Lewis was out in front and he's kind of looking back. He's got to find a way to get a body on him on one of those defenders. First and 10 from the Atoma 46. Clock back underway, now at 2.45. Crabtree again off the right side. Nothing there this okay. time as he's hit after a gain of one. Ball on the ground, fumble, okay. who's got it? Threw the beanbag down. Josh is down again. Calling second down, you might want to call your timeout. Oh. Or get an official's timeout. Need an official's timeout. We got guys who are slow to get around here. And I know people are going to want us to take time out here, Scott, but we need to get timeouts for the second drive if we can score. Second down and 10 after no game. Crabtree countered to Messina coming near side, trying to follow his blockers. Nope. Nothing there, and by the time he decided to go outside, he was cut off, no gain. But it'll be third and 10, and now Burlington will take its second timeout at 2.16 remaining. Kurtz and Moreland on the stop there now. They're kind of heading up knowing that the three big plays they have have been the sweep, the counter, 
and then that little iso dive that Cameron loves to run and come back side with, just struggled throwing the ball. You got we hit it early. We've got to find a way. I don't know if they're going to run the Statue of Liberty play that I talked about. That was run about three or four weeks ago up at Cedar Rapids Prairie. Um, but, you know, it, it really does shorten your playlist, Scott. Well, the Greyhounds trying to get their first ever victory in Class 4A District 6. Trying to get their second victory of the season. On senior night, the final home game of 2015. Well, they'll have two plays to get on these 10 yards, Scott. I'm, I'd love to be able to tell everybody what I believe that they're going to run, but uh, I just don't have that in the bag right now. Well, that's why you're up here not on the sideline anymore. Yeah, you betcha. Looks like they're going to come out in their base formation. They got two split ends here. So third down and 10 from the 46, 216 remaining in the ballgame. Sherwood right, gravel left. McLaughlin back in. He goes in motion left to right. Connor's going to roll right. Juan and McLaughlin in the flat to the right side. And that was well short. He'd have been stopped inbounds after a gain of maybe two. I got to tell you, Cameron Crabtree's got to stop that penetration off that motion. They are just sending guys off the edge. Um, It might be a situation where you just got to catch and throw vertical and hope for pass interference. Bringing in your tall guys with gravel and Sherwood. So this is it. Fourth down and 10 from the 46. Stop here, short of the first down, and this game is over except for the final two minutes. Connor, back to pass. Throws down the left seam. Had Messina, but it was tipped away, I believe, by Sam Moreland. Falls incomplete, and the Greyhounds will turn it over on downs with 2.10 remaining. Colton shoot on the breakup. Good seam call, good throw. But again, you got an inexperienced quarterback who's in pressure. And, uh, you know, that's just a tough break, especially when you came out of the block so well uh, to open up the game for the Greyhounds. Feel horrible for these seniors on senior night. But they played their hearts out, Scott. That, that you can rest assured. And I'll take the blame for it. I mistakenly said winning is nice. And I meant to say that being in the lead at that point in time. But I'll take the heat. I formation set as the tumble will look to run out the final 130 seconds. Isaiah Cox off the right side, gain of two to the 48. The Greyhounds have one timeout that they will take. Well, I thought I saw Zach Shea going to take it right there, but he's not. Nice tackle by Drake Yeager right there as he grabbed up Cox. He, he was trying to strip the ball as he was bringing him into the bring him to turf. Clock ticks down inside of a minute 45. You know, you just you got to find a way to stop the clock without using your timeout. Play clock at five. Second down and eight from the Atelmo 48. Cox, left side, pulled down from behind by Messina. Finished off by Sherwood after a gain of two to the 50. They get this stop, you know they're going to call the timeout because you know they're going to punt. Minute 20 remaining. Play clock at 20. They can run it down to about... 58 seconds left before they have to snap it. Third down and six. Sam Moreland has been at quarterback all night long. Tailed by either Isaiah Cox or Isaiah Hutchinson. Right now it's Cox. Moreland's going to keep it. Strung out by Crabtree. Ultimately a loss of one as it's finished up by Wegman and Anderson and Tellis along with Cardenas ready to find in there. So we get the stop. Think you got to try to put pressure on the kick. Uh, Fair catch it or get upfield as fast as you can, and then you got to make something happen fast. You know, in this situation, do you even send somebody back? Do you maybe just accept that if he gets it away, it's over, and so you try and block the kick with all 11 guys? It all depends what you've practiced. If you practice uh, sending people into the into the hunt and not having anybody back and letting the chips roll where they may, then yeah. But if you got somebody who you know, if you practice where you're always going to have one deep and try to get as far upfield after the kick, you can. The thing that every coach kind of worries about when you're trying to go an all-out block is running into the kicker or roughing the kicker. But at this point in the game, uh, you got to you got to give yourself some sort of chance. 
So the Greyhounds with no timeouts remaining, 52 seconds remaining in the ballgame, trailing 28-17. And I'm going to tell you what, Scott, don't be surprised if they come out and run an offensive play. As good as they've been offensively in the second half, they could run the play. It's not going to bother them. Which, look at there. Trips to the left side, fourth down and seven from the Bulldog 49. You're going to have to get somebody on that far edge. Moreland going to roll left. Shadowed Too by Sherwood, time. now going to throw. Oh, shot his man at the 35, and it falls incomplete. He wanted his brother Matt. Warwick yeah. just off his fingertips for the interception. So the Greyhounds get it first and 10 on downs at the Bulldog 49, but no timeouts and 46 seconds remaining, trailing by 11. Got to get a touchdown probably in the next two plays and a two-pointer. And an onside kick. Onside kick and then probably a long field goal. It's Unlikely, cool. but not impossible. That's why you have all the ticks on the clock, you do. Connor back to pass. Pump fake left, throws left, had gravel, but undershot it. You know, it looked like Tip was trying to pump fake him to go a hitch and go there, Scott, and then I kind of regathered himself, and the ball just kind of came up short. So second and 10 after the incompletion, 42 seconds remaining. You can see the defensive backfield with Rodgers, um, Bridges, and uh, got, got Gowling about 12, 15 yards off the ball. They're going to let you have the catch inside. Connor throws deep down the right side, wants Sherwood. Had Sherwood, but knocked out of the way by Isaiah Cox. And to Rogers. me, Sherwood's got to come back a little bit yeah. tougher to the football. Isaiah Rodgers on the cover there, Mace. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, that's... No. Thinking... Yeah. Thinking lot... two, saw four, but didn't make the yep. switch. So it's... Uh, you're on the third and ten, and once again, you got to find a way to move the chain. So you know you're going to have to kind of come in, catch a ball on a curl, something underneath, maybe even hook and ladder. Sherwood left, gravel right. Third and ten from the 49 of a tumble. Motion man is McLaughlin from right to left. Here's Connor. the curl. Going to throw down the seam, intended for Sherwood. Overshot him, and falls incomplete. It'll be fourth and ten. Not sure that was... Uh... The hardest route I've ever seen on a curl run, uh, trying to get open. I'm not sure if he was trying to read skinny post or, or what was going on there, but fell into the open part of the zone. So this could be the last offensive play of the home season for the Greyhounds, fourth and ten from the 49 of Ottumwa. Connor about five yards behind center. McLaughlin in motion from left to right. Connor will roll right. Hit, throws. Two, Not enough. Two-yard completion to McLaughlin, but well short of the first down. And on downs, the tumble will take over and run out the clock. It'll just, take one kneel down. Just too much pressure, Scott. Colton Shoup on the, on the coverage there, but just too much pressure up front. Cameron Crabtree got to be able to get him, pick him up. As, as, as good as Tip Kana came inside, there's just too much pressure coming on him too soon. So Otumbo will improve to 4-4 four and four overall and break a four-game losing streak. They'll now be 1-3 and three in Class 4A District 6. The Greyhounds will continue to look for their first-ever win in district competition. Now 1-7 and seven overall and 0-4 oh and in the district. A nine-game district losing streak spanning two seasons. And they have a tough test next week as they finish their season on the road at Cedar Rapids, Washington. Number five team in Class 4A in the state of Iowa. Uh, they were a young team last year, and they're older, and they're bigger, and they're more physical. Uh, you're dealing with a lot of guys who are in the top five of every category offensively and defensively in the state. So the Greyhounds led 17 to nothing, two and a half minutes or three and a half minutes into the second quarter. Only to see it slip away. A tumble with 28 unanswered to finish this out. And the Bulldogs leave the Doghouse Trophy, if it exists, here in Burlington for another year. A tumble with 28. Burlington 17. Back in two minutes to begin the postgame show on KBUR and KBUR.com. Back here at Merrill A. Miller Family Field, we are joined by head coach Zach Shea, who was a little tardy tonight, but that's all right. It's senior night. Maybe he was talking to some senior parents. Maybe he was talking to some players. But either way, he's with us now. Thanks for coming up, Coach. I know it's a tough night. 
Yeah, I mean, it's obviously been a tough year. I mean, but uh, I'm proud of our guys. They came out and, you know, they battled for four quarters, and all I asked them is if they could give us, you know, a competitive game and give us a chance to win the four and make it there. Well, and the first thing you said when you sat down was, man, injuries killed us. So I assume that there were some other situations in the game that uh, cost you some personnel on the field at times when you would have really wanted them out there. Yeah, I mean, you know, we just had to tell because we can't throw Crabtree. He had to carry the ball almost every time. And he played 10 linebackers. So he's like, you know, I guess the team is going to follow football. So, you know, that took a lot out of our Well, I, I told you off the air, I have to ask one tough question, and it really comes down to I want you to go back early fourth quarter. Uh, you had a second down and 23, and you had a long completion to make it third down and two. You had the completion along the near side from Connor to Tyler Messina, who made a great catch near the 20. I think it was third and two from the 21, and you made the decision instead of maybe using Crabtree, which had been your M.O. throughout the first three quarters, to run uh, kind of a sweep with Cullen McLaughlin, who had yet to carry the ball to that point in time. They make a stop. Ta- they, they, it ends up being a two-yard loss, so now it becomes fourth and four, and I felt like that really turned some momentum. So I want to ask you, what was your thinking with that play call? Well, we debated going back to our heavy, but we had we had to get out of that first number, which was what we call speed, and get back into heavy. So the call went in at double lead. So it's supposed to be a downhill, like an ISO play. Well, the colon took it outside, and it looked kind of like an off-tackle play, where it was supposed to be downhill, you know, to try and get those one, one or two yards. And I completely agree, because... You know, after we just looked at each other as coaches, we're like, well, she went back to heavy and just ran uh, crap to me. But we thought we were going to run double lead ISO straight downhill would have got us at least a yard. But, you know, he kind of hit it outside and uh, the play wasn't ran the way it was designed. Well, it happens. You know, kids will be kids. Players will be players. I don't care what level it is. You want one thing to happen, but sometimes the players see something totally different and react differently from a way that you would have hoped or expected. And I appreciate you answering that question. Like I say, I don't make it a habit to ask the tough questions because, you know, you could pick any point of any game a lot of times and and harp on it, but that was one play that stood out to me. Let's talk about the first quarter and a half. I mean, you talk about... Greyhound football, probably the way you've wanted to see it all year long. You're up 17 to nothing about 15 and a half minutes into this ball game. What was the offense doing to get clicking on all cylinders? You were just controlling the line of scrimmage. Well, I just really felt like our energy level was, was way up there, and the offensive line controlled the line of scrimmage, you know, for the first time in, you know, a couple of weeks. And we were, we were knocking them off the ball, and uh, to be quite frank, they didn't make an adjustment to our heavy personnel. They, they didn't, because we overloaded the one side, and they didn't adjust, so we just kept running to the overload side. And, uh, you know, they finally made the adjustment about midway through the second quarter, and, you know, that's when they started to slow us down a little bit. So do you feel that their adjustments were what really turned the momentum? I mean, you, you score, and then they take it right down the field after you go up 17 to nothing. And i got to take a bullet for this one, Coach. I mistakenly said watching a win sure is fun. I meant to say watching a lead or something along those lines was fun. In fact, I got a text right away that said I jinxed them, and of course I did. 28 unanswered to result in a 28-17 loss, but was there any one thing that Atumma was able to do to adjust? You know, you talk about them running downhill, you talk about their line starting to take control, but... It was just a complete 180 from what you'd seen through the first 15 minutes for the remainder of the ball game. Well, I mean, if you look at what they came out in the second half, it was 12 personnel, two tight end, one, I mean, one back, two tight end, and they just lined up and just ran the ball against us. And we were playing zero coverage uh, right before the end of the half, and, you know, when you do that, you don't have anybody deep, and they snuck the tight end out, got an easy score there, and then the second half, we just... You know, they just kind of, lack of a better word, bullied us up front, and they just, you know, walked the, the ball down down the field. So that was the biggest thing to me is we couldn't stop them the second half offensively. And I can't imagine, you know, talking to the kids 
after the game as you do at midfield after every game, how despondent they must be knowing that they, in their own minds, they probably feel like they let one get away. Like I said, I mean, we, we've gotten better. You know, it doesn't show in the, the win-loss column, but just how we operate, how we function, our you know, our kids are showing up on time. They're doing the right thing. Uh, you know, I feel feel bad for them because the season obviously is not going the way we would have liked. But you know, that that says a lot for your character and our character as a football team and the kids that we have on our team. I mean, they they kept battling and. You know, they showed it tonight, a one in seven football team uh, coming into this game, and, and they came out here and battled them, had a chance you know, in the fourth quarter to win the game. Well, we're still in search for that first district win, but it's getting closer and closer. Next week will be a tall challenge. Well, you know, preliminarily, what do you even know or think about the number five team in the state of Iowa? I, you know, I don't know much. I mean, obviously it's going to be a, going to be a tough battle, but I expect our guys to come and, and know we're going to be in the weight room tomorrow. We're, we're going to watch film and get things corrected and uh, just move forward like it's a, another game, you know, game week and uh, prepare and go out there and play because it's, it's our seniors' last game and you know, we owe it to them to do that. Well, great effort tonight, Coach, and as always, I appreciate you coming up in the toughest of circumstances and. The worm will turn, I say it. It's a process. You say that. The worm will turn. We'll talk about a win sooner than later. Thanks again for coming up tonight, and we'll see you next week and talk about the preview of the, uh, the uh, Washington and Burlington game coming up next Friday night. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Head coach Zach Shea. If I could figure out what I wanted to say to conclude that segment, I would have made a much prof- more professional statement right there. But you know what? Just not that professional right now. Head coach Zach Shea is always a class act coming up sharing his thoughts, and we'll bring John Flaherty in for the final time. And I won't subject you to the headphones. I'll give you the, uh, the standing mic like your Keith Jackson, Monday Night Football 1971. Oh, let me tell you about Keith Don. Jackson, Don Meredith. All right, well, make sure you get it close to your mouth because I want to make sure people hear what you have to say. Your thoughts, your final thoughts. Well, actually, let's do this. We've got to tell who tonight's Dr. Kirk Masner family dentistry player of the game, and it's it's kind of a broken record, but... Again, every week he plays down in and down out as probably the best player on this team, and that's Cameron Crabtree. Right now, being the most productive player, Cameron Crabtree has certainly done a nice job. I know Spencer Sherwood has played well. Tyler Messina is doing a great job. Uh, but tonight, Cameron just seemed to be in so many places at one time, whether he was running the ball uh, on special teams or on defense. So congratulations to Cameron for tonight. Uh, most valuable player of the game. So. And to to his credit, I asked Zach, I don't know if you heard his answer, but I asked him about the play in question, about the third and two, and why the choice was made to give it to Cullen McLaughlin, and his answer was simply, the play is designed to cut inside. Cullen saw something that he thought outside, and, and decided to go that route, and he was dropped for a two-yard loss. Assuredly, on the sideline as a coach, you know the kid's out there busting his tail to do everything he can that you want him to do. But that's got to be a very frustrating situation when you think a play's going to go one way and it goes something else and blows up. Well, and, and it's frustrating in two specific ways. First of all, that it wasn't executed well. Number two, uh, you're trying to put a trust in a young man who's, who's new to the varsity level and, and, and you want to trust his athletic ability because vision is one of those things, Scott, as you know, that you can't always teach and so you have to trust that and so it's frustrating for Cullen to say okay this is what I thought I saw and it didn't work out because you think okay all I gotta do is just jump outside and I'm gonna get the first down um, and, and and so there's you gotta trust that and yet when it doesn't work it becomes frustrating because you know you've designed the play to go downhill and double lead again right and, and just have to go downhill lower your shoulders get through and that's a, that's a young player's mistake. That, that just simply put, that's a young player's mistake. A lot of kids, middle school, uh, freshman, sophomore level, you know they're so talented. All you got to do is stop, jump, cut, and get outside. And, and and you can't do that at this level. It's just the guys are just too good. Well, a heartbreaking loss, an 11-point loss may not seem that way, but when you lead 17 to nothing and end up losing by 11, it's heartbreaking, especially on senior night, a game that I'm sure this team walks out feeling like they should have won. And uh, I know we do as well. We'll start with our thank yous as always, Coach. Thanks for coming up for another Friday night. We've got one left. Let's bring it home strong. Yep, we, get, we, need, to, we need to send these seniors out uh, on a strong note and, and really get into a nice springboard in the 2016. Theater Rapids, Washington on tap next week. A top 10 team, a top 5 team in the state of Iowa. 
Burlington's still going to be looking for its first district win in school history. Want to get some thank yous out of the way. Of course, John Flaherty, as I've already talked about. Want to thank Coach Zach Shea for coming up and talking on the post-game show. Also want to thank Jerry Carlson back in the studio. That's right. I said on the post-game show. It kind of came out Baltimore-ish. You know the Baltimore yeah, East Coast accent. East Coast yeah. yeah, so uh, I want to thank the coach for coming up. And I also want to thank Jerry Carlson back in the studio for getting us in and out of break as well as he does each and every Friday night. Want to thank our sponsors. Of course, that would be Sherwood Company, Standard of Beaverdale, Carlos Captavila, American Family Insurance, Dr. Kirk Bansner, Family Dentistry, Bongrover Glass and Building Supplies, Mershman Furniture, and Case Buying Community Credit Union. I want to thank all of you out there in listening land who listen tonight, as you do each and every Friday night when we bring you Burlington High School football. Thanks so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed listening as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. And finally, as always, I want to thank my son who's at my side. He was playing tonight. He didn't have time for us, Flair. He had to go out and play with his friends for the first time all year, which is cool. That's what you're supposed to do. You don't want to get stuck up here with Dad all night. No. No. So he's down there playing with his buddies, but I want to thank him, and I also want to thank the two ladies in our lives. Of course, Mom Kelly and Sister Aubrey and daughter to me, Aubrey. If they didn't let us do this, I couldn't bring you to all nine football games. You're going to be with us right, ne- right next week, right, out, right in? Okay, so Ian's goal was to be at all nine football games. He's been to the first eight. Let's cross our fingers he doesn't get sick. But thank you so much, girls. We both love you so very much, and we will be home in about a half hour. Once again, your final score, Burlington Falls 28-17 to a tumble. They finished the home slate 1-3, and three. now 1-7 and seven overall and 0-4 oh in the district as we look to the season finale in Cedar Rapids at Washington High School next week. And as always, until next Friday night in Cedar Rapids, I say goodbye and... Go Greyhounds!